Uh, Vinny, if you scroll up in the D and D chat, uh, you can see last week I posted a recap of the last session, uh, including the security features they found at this heist that they're about to do, as well as the potential loot that you can steal from this heist that they're about to do. Uh, and I'll do a recap here when we get started. Uh, I'm just trying to find the channel. It's called Wicked City. Okay. All right, we got it. We're we're ready. We're ready. We're we're rocking and rolling. We're ready, Freddy. All right, that's what I like to hear. All right, welcome back to Wicked City. This is session three of story one. Um, the last time we left off, you guys had just scoped out your uh, goal for this adventure: the El Torchal Villa Muse Museum. Uh, the museum is a museum of natural history. It has many prehistoric objects and animals and stones. One of those stones is called the Merkmeyer Stone. The archaeologist who discovered it, Dr. Cassie Daniels, believe it is the egg of an eldritch being, and it will hatch uh, the more and more that people interact with it. Uh, her, She was so convinced of this that she tried to steal the stone from the museum herself. She got caught, it made headlines, and a mysterious organization called the Golden Keys took note of it. The Golden Keys are who y'all are working for. The representative of the Golden Keys is a strange man named Galanis, who reached out to all of you and invited you here to do this heist. Uh, last session, y'all actually went to the El Torchal Villa Museum in the North Sea Ward of Waterdeep. You explored... Uh, its bottom floor, its second floor, and its attic. You know that there is a basement, but you did not find a way to get to it. Um, you discovered that any locked door has an alarm on it. That alarm is deactivated by some purple dust that all the guards carry around. You discovered various things of value, such as cash registers, uh, where they take gold coins and silver coins for various trinkets and snacks that they sell at the museum. Uh, it was implied by the curator, Alda Arkin, that there were more alarms than what you saw and alarms placed on more things than just locked doors. When you get up to the second floor of the museum, there's their famous Allosaurus exhibit where they show prehistoric animals. There are rooms to the south of the second floor that have things like a plus one pickaxe and a plus one dagger. Um, there is also a fake version of the Merkmeyer stone on the second floor. And uh, there is also the Merkmeyer exhibit on the second floor, which has the real Merkmeyer stone, your target, uh, in the center of this room that's meant for a big gala that's going to happen later tonight. Um... Let me look at the Discord chat real quick. Uh, curator Alda Arkin has a master key that unlocks all doors and deactivates those alarms. The ceilings are considered 30 feet high. The attic ceiling is considered 15 feet high. There's a skylight in the attic that is locked with a sliding lock from the inside. The Merkmeyer stone weighs between 80 to 120 pounds, and the stone's pedestal has a magical weight center, sensor that will call all, of the, all the guards and activate arcane locks on all doors. Uh, there are big gems that you can steal uh, that would be worth a lot of money. All the guards have plus one armor and weapons, and guests at the gala tonight will be wearing uh, jewelry and presumably have a lot of gold on them. Does anyone have any questions about the last session? Yes. Hit me with it. So I just missed your entire speech. I forgot everything that happened. Can you give me another rundown? My man, did you watch uh, either the stream VOD or the edited recap? No, because I was a part of it. Why would I watch it? Because Brax is a great player, great friend, and he knows what is going on. I am a great friend. Ask anybody. I'll bend head over heels for people. Brax, go look up at the recap that I posted last week. I basically <laughs> just read it out loud. 
Yeah, no, I'll, I, I, I remember a good portion of it. Okay, yeah. Uh, does anyone uh, else have any questions? Yeah, uh, we had a bag of holding. Uh, I'm, I'm just making, I'm just confirming Suit that, right? Case of holding. You have a briefcase of holding. of holding. It is the only form of payment that Dr. Daniels could give you. But gotcha. uh, Atlantis is paying you 50 gold pieces each. And that suitcase can hold up to a certain amount of weight? I forget. The suitcase of holding has the exact same rules as a bag of holding. I'll just look that up. And I just want to confirm that uh, and she left off like in the sewers on the way to the Xanathar Guild where we mm -hmm. left something. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. That's all I got. Okay, Vinny. Yes. Um, is your character a good person? Not particularly. It's pretty uh, self-serving. It's not. Oh. Uh, it's not mean-spirited. Okay. Great. But uh, definitely an emphasis on the hedonism and self-gratification. Oh, yeah, Cleric of Sune. I need to write that down. Okay, so with that, we'll say that you are friends with Brax's character, Destry. Destry is a human warlock and a noble. He is the third warden's son of a third warden's son, so he's not a particularly powerful noble, but he is still one. So we'll say that y'all know each other and that he invited you along on this job. And uh, if you want to keep playing this game, we can come up with a, a, a backstory and incorporate it for you. Okay. Yeah? Sounds like a plan. All right. Um, I was going to let Kirby go first, since he didn't get to really do anything last session, uh, except for walk up the stairs. Um, so we will start with Sean. Wait, where's Kirby? Okay. Kirby's not coming tonight. He has to get ready for a wedding. Yes, he's the uh, he's the best man for tomorrow's wedding, yes. Oh, yes. speaking of, that's why I was late. I was kind of ironing my suit while I went to grab dinner. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Who's getting married? <coughs> Talking uh, with Adam. Anyway. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's getting married tomorrow. That's great. Um, almost all the guys from, uh, uh, the Monday game are going. Except oh, for the crazy. dickhead you see in front of you looking at you, Schizo. Yeah, let me go ahead and pay a bunch of money to go to Canada. Oh, I need to turn my camera on. Yeah, dude. Just pay the travel fees. Get your All right, let me, uh, get my bank account ready. Oh, wait, I have, like, three dollars. Shit. All right, enough uh, lollygagging. Uh, keep the lollygagging up. I have to find the feed skill map real quick. Okay. I'm stealing someone's sweet roll. So, I kind of know a little bit about the heist and what's going on here. But oh, wow. uh, would someone care to fill me in on how you folks are planning on doing it? <laughs> That's actually what they were we doing. We don't. Yeah, we, we, we were That's coming we up with ideas. Deciding. Yeah, yeah, and she's already been in the party, so it's really up to y'all if you want to discuss further right now. Well, no, y'all should talk about what your plan is, because you went to the Xanathar Guild because you wanted to ask them to give you a couple of goons to stage a fake break-in to distract security, but y'all didn't really sound sure about that. So y'all should figure out what you wanted from the Thieves Guild all together, and then we'll say you go into the sewers. Yeah? I'll say that I'm, like, only barely in the sewers, and they can yell at me, because I kind of assumed that's where I left off, but I'll just be, like, a couple of feet. Like, I'm, like, right in the main hole. Okay. Well, I thought we were going to break in the night before, get into the main office, get the magic powder so we can, you know, disable the alarms. And then, you know just manually disable everything we come across. That way, hopefully, we don't trigger an alarm. 
but it's getting in that I see being the problem if we do it before the gala. And I don't want to go in during the gala because there's going to be a lot of witnesses. And yeah. it's not like a masked party. It's a everyone just shows up. And oh god, you're playing as Dreidel Puff. Um, Dreidel and, Puff. And we're all, uh, you know, showing our faces. Unless we go in with masks on, and then people are going to be like, why are these bozos wearing masks? They came to the wrong museum. There's also a variety of ways to disguise yourself with magic in there Dungeons is. and Dragons. But we don't have a lot of money, and uh, as far as I'm aware, in and out of character, not one of us is really designed for illusion magic. What? One one of you is an illusion wizard. I didn't know this. I knew he was a wizard. I didn't know he was an illusion wizard. And someone else is a trickster. Uh, Vinny's a trickster cleric. Well, yeah. Well, that was decided after we started making the plans. So you know, I didn't not him overly illusion time. focused, but path was or pass without trace is great. It is great. And I can uh, take disguise self. Because you're a turtle. Yeah. And, and she is specifically uh, geared towards illusion magic. And to kind okay. of rejoin the party, uh, and she pokes his head back out of the main hole and says, Hey, guys, there's a, a big old turd down here. I think that's an ogre turd. Want to check it out? No. I'm, I'm good. Okay. Why am I not surprised you would find that amusing? I mean, no. it, it's bigger than my arm. Bigger than you, I mean, are, my friend. It's gross. Crap. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So, are we down with the plane? What's going on up here? What are you talking about? I say we go in at night. We go in through the back. We have a decoy team going through the front. Get the guards' attentions. Fuck off. You know, drag them away, whatever. While we either go in through the back or the roof, because there is a skylight, and we make our way to the head office to get the magic powder. As we have all discussed, and know the powder uh, bypasses the arcane locks and alarms, allowing us to get into where we need to go to get what we need. Getting and she kind of sit is the big and... question. Real quick, I want to say y'all can always ask Galanis for help if your problem is that you want money to buy some items or something. You know, he seems like the kind of guy that would be helpful. Uh, Destry, you're a noble. You could try to get a loan from somebody. You do know a loan shark. You also have your patron, uh, Blinken. Uh, you could always steal money from work or something like that. Like, just because I haven't given you money doesn't mean you can't get money in this campaign. Uh, I think Enchi was like hanging from the edge of the manhole cover as he was listening to uh, I forgot what Brax's character's name Destry. is. Destry. Destry. Uh, but his arms got tired pretty quickly, so he he pulled himself up and is sitting on the edge of the manhole, and uh, he says, "Wait, I." We're going in together now? I thought the plan was for me, Inchi, to go in invisible with the cleaning crew. You want to join? I forgot about that. It's not a bad idea. Yeah, there's a cleaning crew. They're going to come in. They're going to disenchant the egg. And what I was hoping, while I was going to travel here in the super four, is I was going to find us uh, someone to help us with a distraction. And while you and maybe some poor souls that are willing to get caught for us uh, distract the folks, I can steal the egg and I can try to sneak my way out of this museum. You know yeah, what? I like that idea. It's not bad. So, yeah, go get some uh, low-level, like, like low totem pole goons whose entire job is to cause distractions and maybe get caught. Yeah, if anything, and, I could uh, throw, like, ten gold or something for him. 
oh no, just tell them that it'll give them reputation with your uh, your group. If they're if they're looking for the group, yeah. And then uh... I'll... Huh? I'll see what kind of deal I can uh, uh, hammer out with Neil Hoare. And then we'll uh, let you go in with the cl cleaning crew, and we'll uh, assist with the distraction. Sounds fun, gang. All right. Adios. Uh, nope. Okay. And then she's just already hopped back down to the main hole. I mean, that's already a good plan anyway. Always run to the to the uh, manhole cover. Um, Vinny, Always. you're going to need to send me a picture of your character so that I can make a token with it. Sure. I mean... Da, da, da. All right, guys. I'm about to drop y'all on a map that's pretty big. It is the Thieves Guild headquarters. You are not going to be able to see all of it. But every time you come to the Thieves Guild, no matter what way you come, I'll reveal more and more of this map. This is the lair of Xanathar the Beholder. Uh, this is where he Ooh. does his operations. This is where he hangs out. It is basically a very big dungeon. Uh, but in, in a typical campaign, you would just approach it and work your way through it. Uh, the idea here is, is that you're going to have to discover more about it over time. And then once you have a good idea of the layout, you can make a plan to steal from Xanathar or kill Xanathar or fuck with his operation or use his operation for your own ends. So, uh, that is the plan with that. Uh, can everybody see where y'all are on the map? Yes. How do you, yeah. All right. Only yep. NG should be visible right now. NG, can you control your token? Yes. Fantastic. Let me figure out where Nilhor is. Now, Inchi's already been down to the Xanathar Guild once, and I am seeing two different entrances. Where did Inchi go last time? Because I did not see it last time. Can you see the whole map? I can see two entrances. Let's see if I can ping it here. Okay. And here. Okay. So where you entered was uh, right here. This is the entrance from the sewers. Uh, let me figure out where Nilhor's office is real quick, and then I'll give you some narration explaining that. Sure. sworn he had an actual office. X23. Oh, since the sewers led to this location, I want to ask if any of this floor is damp from the sewage. Yes, it would be, especially in this starting area. Perfect. Okay, give me just one second here. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just going to take you to the audience chamber. Oops. My bad. Okay, let me do the fog of war. Uh, 
Okay. All right. So, Inchi, you are a new member to the Thieves Guild. They basically just kind of inducted you by saying uh, that you're you're a member here now. Or you went up to them and asked for a job, and they said, yeah, we'll give you a job. We'll see how you do. They were testing you out. So you haven't really seen the whole operation. You don't really know much about it. You were told... Oh, fuck me. How... Does anybody know if there's a way to turn off the snap to grid thing for the tokens? Um... I haven't used Roll20 in eons, dude. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, I'm just getting back into it because I'm, I'm trying to fuck with it for a little bit. I want to say it was either alt drag or shift drag lets you plop it without it snapping. And also, like, there's the measure section there that says to change the snap to no snapping on the left. Grid snapping, no snapping. Let's see if that works. Nope, it's still doing it. Fuck me. All right, I'll just make it work like this. Okay, so Inchi, you drop down into the sewers. You know that your way to get to the Thieves' Guild is to follow these little marks that are written in chalk all over the sewer system. The mark is an eye looking in a certain direction. So when you get to a wall and there's a left uh, sewage tunnel and a right sewage tunnel to take, there's a little eye looking to the right, and you know that that's the way to go. Eventually, you start seeing glowing stones in the wall, red, green, blue, and you follow those stones along with the drawings of the eye, and then eventually all the stones turn purple, and you get closer and closer to this door. The sewage still flows here. You can feel it between your feet, uh, the warm, running sewage water, uh, and you get to this door, and you knock on it, um, and uh, when you were here last time, you would have been given a bandana. That kind of shows, hey, you're a member of this gang. Uh, and mm. you would be expected to flash that to get through this door. Okay, and she's not wearing that bandana, but he's just kind of like waving it like a, like a white flag saying, hey, hey, let me get, some, get the banana. Let me in. Um, you say, oh! Uh, it's another goblin on the other side of the door. And they say, hey, if it isn't Mr. Tight Lips himself. Oh, that sounds fucking hey. good. Hey. Hey. <laughs> he opens the door and he says, I meant in a way that says he's not a snitch. He didn't snitch on nobody. Uh, and she didn't think anything otherwise. She's like, hey, it's good to see you too, stranger. And I just kind of walk uh, right past him. Hey, where's Neil Horn? He's like, uh, he's doing meetings in the audience chamber. Mm. Okay. I so, love it. I'll walk you to there real quick. Okay. Um, so he opens the door, and uh, you walk a little bit down a spiral staircase. The staircase eventually leads out into uh, uh, the walls of this narrow spiraling staircase are carved with open eyes that glow with a faint magical light. You feel as if you're being watched as you descend down these stairs. Yeah, you can cut. So what? Yeah, you can keep moving your character. Yeah, no, sorry. Uh, you cut out on me there for a second. Oh, I did? Um, I read the description. The walls of this narrow, spiraling staircase are carved with open eyes that glow with a faint, magical light. You feel as though you're being watched as you descend the stairs. And the feeling doesn't go away. You know that you are entering the lair of Xanathar, the Beholder. You've never seen him, but the legends are that you never, ever want to see him. For it will be the last thing you ever see. I think every time I see one of these R eyes carved in the wall, and she just kind of pokes at him and says, hey, poke, poke, hey, poke. <laughs> and he just keeps walking along. Um, all right, hold your token right there.
Okay, so as you get to this little wall right here, uh, there's another guard right there, and they go, Hey, Inchi, it's the guy. We couldn't have done the castle lantern heist without you, man. Hey, check this out. You're going to need to know this if you move on up in the guild. And he pushes a little stone in the wall, and it slides open right here, revealing a smaller staircase, or revealing wow. another staircase that is a secret wow. and hidden. Yeah. Um, you also notice... These little areas right here that lead off into different areas. You can explore those later if you want. All right. As you walk down this staircase, you hear the sounds of cheering. You hear the sounds of people yelling, some angry, some uh, happy and joyous. And you walk uh, past this area right here, and you can see that there is another set of stairs, just two sets of big stairs, like a... Uh, uh, rows of of con of stone seats at a coliseum, uh, and you can see that in the middle of the sand pit here, there are two monsters fighting. It is a bugbear and an orc, and they are fighting and they are punching each other very hard. Uh, they are breaking bones. Teeth are coming out when they get punched in the face. Do you want to stay and watch this? Oh, Edgy sits right now and says, "Fight! Fight! Fight! Fight!" All right, yep. there's no description here. All right, as you watch this fight, uh, uh, do you want to take uh, any bets? Uh, is there anyone around that particularly looks like that they're, you know, taking bets? Actually, you know what? No, Entry is dirt broke. No. Okay. You, you don't got nothing. Okay, I was about to say, there are a dozen people watching this fight. Every single one of them looks like they would make a bet with you. They are all. I think if he had skills. money, he'd, he'd consider it. Okay. Uh, you notice everybody here has that purple bandana on them in some way. Um, let me do a roll real quick. Okay. Inchi, you notice uh, uh, as you get up to continue on your way that there is an area across from this pit. I'll actually reveal the whole area for you. Across the way, there is a little uh, balcony right here that's a little like a half circle. Uh, and you can see that there are m multiple people standing up there. There is a dwarf standing there uh, dressed in fine clothes, and there are two orcs uh, standing side by side something in a big chair that's draped with a black cloth. Okay, uh, are any of them looking at me? No, they are watching the fight uh, with glee. Uh, every once in a while, the dwarf leans over and whispers something uh, to whatever is underneath that black cloth. Well, then in that case, uh, and she's just going to look back at the fight. Uh, he's going to, like, tap the person right to his right. It says, hey, my money's on the bugbear. What about you? He goes, orcs. Orcs all day. Every one of them. It's, uh, it's in the nature, you know? Mm -hmm. Bugbear looks scary, though. Yeah, looks scary. But bugbears, big softies inside. Ain't got what it takes. I think you're wrong. Bite, well, bite, I think you bite. should shove it. I think you should shove it. Yeah. All right. Uh, after you watch the fight for a bit, uh, let me roll. We'll see who wins. Evens, it's the bugbear. Odds, it's the orc. Okay. Oop. The orc won. Uh, half the crowd cheers. The other crowd goes, hey, hey, I'm not paying you what I said I'd pay you. Uh, that, 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 that orc clearly cheated. Uh, my, my bugbear was robbed. And then they all start bickering with each other. You move. I don't make uh, eye contact with the guy I was arguing with, but I just kind of mumble, eh, he's raped. And then just kind of walk away. <laughs> nice. You continue south uh, down the staircase, and you come into this area that has many glowing lights. Let me read the description. 
This is the promenade. Pillars carved with eyes follow the curvature of the hall. These eyes seem to track creatures as they pass by. Um, I, I, I just wave at one as I walk walk past, looking around for uh, any sort of leadership like Nilhor. Just a moment. All right. Uh, as you walk around this promenade, you see the quartermaster of the Thieves Guild, uh, 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 Margo. He is the dwarf that gave you a little dagger the last time you were here. It's his job to make sure everybody in the Thieves Guild has uh, what they need to do their jobs. Mm. And uh, immediately oh. to your left here is the audience chamber where Nilhor is taking meetings today. Okay, so you said in this direction is where the audience chamber is. Yep. Yep, I just revealed it for you. And you notice that okay. there is a door to the south and to the west here. Uh, and she just kind of walks up to, uh, I forget what the quartermaster's name is, but I don't think I forgot it to begin with, so, and she doesn't know it. You just uh, know just gonna... man with daggers. Right. Hey, dagger man. Where is uh, Nil Horror around here? See down here. All right. Oi, get your butt over to the to the audience chamber. That's where the meetings are today. Hey, hey, you know that goblin that hey. got caught at the first castle out there breaking? You didn't hurt on yeah. nobody. In hey, and he kind of like hits you in the chest, and he means it like affectionately, but it's very aggressive, and it's a dwarf, so his hand is very dense, and it pushes you. Uh, and she's can. And she's and confused said, by the gesture briefly, and he kind of like puts his fists up, and then very quickly puts him back down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was aggressive, but he clearly sees it as like a, a good job, buddy gesture. Just hey, because you kept your mouth shut, buddy, we were able to plan a bigger heist with the people that were with you that didn't get caught. We actually managed to get into Castle Anthermanter and show those as, bastards what for. Didn't find that's what way. I'm saying. Fuck the Castle Anthers, yeah. yeah. All right, I'm going to go see Neil Hor, but it's good seeing you, buddy. Uh, okay. Uh, see you, Inchi. All right, so you walk over into this audience chamber. This is a 40-foot high domed chambers. Uh, the circular floor is tiled in black marble and bears a gold mosaic of an eye, which is Xanathar's symbol. Jutting from the ceiling is a bronze bell-shaped perturbance. There are a dozen lifelike statues. You know these to be the remains of humans, drow, dwarves, and goblinoids, and kobolds who defied Xanathar the Beholder, and he petrified them into stone. In the center of this room is uh, Nilhor. Nilhor is a mind flayer who is uh, Xanathar's second-hand man. Um, I don't have a token for him uh, yet, but he's just, he's just a normal-looking mind player, except his clothes are pretty ratty. Uh, and he's talking to a few people. You know, he's probably giving them their assignments for the night. Uh, as he talks, he points and gestures. Everything's very flowy. He kind of floats a little bit, and he doesn't speak with any real voice. He projects things into your mind. So uh, he's looking at a certain group of people, and he's projecting words to them, and you can't hear them, uh, but they clearly get up and are dismissed, and they begin walking out of the audience chamber past you. Uh, as that happens, though, Nilhor looks in their direction like he forgot to say something, and you hear in your mind as he projects it to these other people, and stay away from the noble party at El Torcho Villa tonight. One of our agents is there to get us a piece of the proceeds. We want it to go smoothly. Those other people nod and continue walking out of the chamber. Uh, Inchi, he says to you, Inchi, the goblin who would not rat. How can I help you? Hey, Nilhor, my colleague, how are you? I haven't seen you okay. in a minute. We're going to fade to black there and go to the everybody else and see what they're doing. I'm going to post what he just said.
Okay. Everybody else, y'all are still in the sea ward of Waterdeep. Uh, your friend Inchi went into the sewers uh, about 30 minutes ago. Um, what would y'all like to do? Well, I... This would be he... Destry, Vinny, and Schizofreak. I believe we agreed to uh, help cause a distraction with the goons he's going to be acquiring. Uh, yeah, that, that, that is true. So, uh... How are we going to cause a distraction? And I mean... let the goons take the fall for it. Well, I mean, I thought that... We would probably discuss that if, you know, these guys are going to show up. But regardless, I mean, there's a number of things I would assume that we could do. Maybe plan on something like if they're going to show up, we got to figure out a time and place, obviously. And then when they show up at that certain time, then we do the distraction. But what is that distraction? That is the question. Well, I believe the time was anywhere between now and midnight when the gala opens. And the place being here by the museum. So do you want to specifically distract outside the museum or inside the museum? Well, that's what we can discuss. I think inside the museum is a better thing because then they'll be distracted. And then, you know, if, if, if our friend has the invisibility spell, then they could just sneak right through. But, uh, like, I don't know how we're going to draw guards outside. Good question. Mr. Poof. Yes. Thoughts? Well, perhaps if someone were to perhaps cause a ruckus outside the venue, the guards would have no choice but to react. Perhaps some sort of scuffle with which a window was broken. Hmm. <clears throat> but I mean, vandali vandalism would indeed get them to come out. That could help, yeah. Um. um. Perhaps we could put on a performance or some such display to gather funds with which we could stage a robbery, which would turn into said scuffle. And if my alms box should fly through the window by happenstance, so be it. Hmm. That is a good move. See, if we break so, the window... It would take quite a while to explain to the gods this most unfortuitous situation <laughs> yeah that would be interesting what if we had a a, uh, a caravan accident mm. where items go flying from both of the carts and one of them happens to go through a window as you mentioned that way, no one's really at fault for causing the damage. It's just a horrible accident. Yeah, we, we would have our... Uh, maybe we'll get a connection with somebody with a, uh, a wagon somewhere and maybe stage that accident. Um, you know, anyone? You do know... Y'all do know that Kirby uh, bought a used wagon uh, from someone called the Used Cart Salesman. Uh, the wheel on it is broken, but it is a cart. Uh, and Kirby said you, we could do whatever we wanted with his character. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> as funny as it would be to destroy his cart. <laughs> that kind of a dick move. Um, yeah, I say, we could also use it for the insurance money staging this accident. Insurance fraud. I didn't say that. I really <laughs> said we could make a claim. <laughs> hmm.
That is a good ploy, but... Well, actually, that brings up a point. If these goons were to, say, steal a cart, and we were happened, uh, happening to be moving uh, Buddy's cart, and they collided, causing a freakish accident that no, f no blame can be laid on uh, our ourselves, A, goods can go flying through unfortunately placed windows, and we can get the insurance claim too. That could be, yeah, I could see that. So we need to find two wagons, or two carts, and... Uh... Well, we have one. Hmm. One cart. Then we can make that happen. I'm going to get a drink real quick. I'll be right back. Yeah. And then when our smelly friend comes back from his hole with, uh, you know, some more goons, we can... Uh... So I must ask, with an event such as this, how close would we reasonably be able to get a cart to the venue? Oh, we have a few hours. I mean, is it physically possible to get a cart close enough to a window? Oh, for sure. Ah, so this museum lacks a fence. <laughs> no! I, I do not believe it lacks a fence. But that does not mean we can't throw things over the fence and make it seem like it was a big crash. Or, God forbid, we were uh, carrying some alchemical items that might be explosive. I fear that may simply make us liable for repairs to the building. Who said it was in our cart? Could have been the other cart that got stolen. And I mean, the dock quarter is just down the road. I'm sure there's many goods that have uh, explosive tendencies and uh, could possibly go missing for the night. Ah, so you wish to commit arson. <laughs> no, 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 no. I do not wish to burn anything down. Just an accident. It, yeah, it's an accident. Arson implies it was intentional. Okay, I'm back. Uh, can you describe the front of this uh, museum to us? Like, is there a gate? Are there windows? Um. Yes and yes, no, no to the gates. Yes to the windows. Uh, no. There are no windows on the front of it. It is made out of, like, s stone and marble, so really the only opening in it is the uh, the door in the front. Okay. So if something were to blow up near the museum, what would mm -hmm. be the most obvious place to put it without causing any real structural damage? You just want an explosion. And then we clarify the Near the Didn't we clarify there was windows in the cafe? Yeah, you said there, there were windows near the cafe. Yeah, on the second store, story, uh, the cafe has a bunch of uh, natural or holes in it for natural light. The okay, rest of so the museum is lit by lamps and torches. Uh, okay. There's like some, there's like small holes in the wall that have bits of glass like shoved in the mortar to let in lights. Okay. It's probably a structurally weak part of the museum wall. So if we stage the accident near there, maybe it will blow the windows out, causing even more of a ruckus, giving our uh, operative more time to get in, get what he needs, and get out. All the while, we can be like, oh no, you hit our cart. 
and we... Yeah, I mean, uh, if we started a fire in the cafe, one could simply pass it off as a cooking uh, accident. And given that this seems to be a very poorly ventilated building, no doubt people would be forced to evacuate. That's true. I could coat some sort of liquid, you know, like fire, maybe like we light something up on the end of one of my arrows, and I could shoot towards the arrow before the accident and cause a little bit of a ruckus there. Yes, and... Uh, in which in... case, we could see if we could uh, see if they have any flammable oil with which we could swap things out with. On the, that it... note, it sounds like we must sample the menu. No, 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 <laughs> I'm going to stop you both right there. As much as I want this heist to go down and uh, for this to work out, I do not wish to set fire and destroy the building. A little bit of damage we can li li we can live with, causing exorbitant amounts of damage is kind of off the table. Well, I mean, it's just a theatrical cooking fire. Destry, uh, as you say that, your raven uh, leans close to your ear and opens its beak, and then a little uh, um, mouth uh, appears from the back of its throat and speaks these words. You can make a construction company and make a killing off the reconstruction fees, boss. It's great. Whenever you need a job, just blow up a building. No, oh why? Isn't your little friend adorable and so smart, too? Destroy, why haven't you introduced me? <laughs> Multiple reasons. Because I'm ignoring him. A little clawed hand uh, reaches out from that second mouth in the back of the throat, and it's very tiny, and it grabs a piece of earwax, and it drags it back into the mouth, and then the raven just starts acting normal then, again. Mm. Oh my, how deliciously decadent. <laughs> um, I'm going to ignore that and shudder at the fact that it just pulled something from my ear and ate it. Um, uh, yep. But yes, we. I do not wish to cause any massive uh, damage to the building. Unfortunately, I do have stakes in this, if that were to happen. No, oh, do tell. For a later date. His, uh, the El Torchel, uh, Villa, is a, it's a university, it's a museum, it's also a mansion where the El Torchel family lives. Uh, they are supported by generous donations, especially from the Castellanter family. And Destry is a member of the Castellanter family, even though he is a very low-ranking uh, and distant uh, from the seat of power. My point being, it would not be good for business. I mean, you'd have an in on the construction for reconstruction. <sighs> All right, we're going to go back to Inshi. Um, if y'all want to decide what you want to get, uh, we can just get those things uh, really quickly. And uh, when Inchi's done, we can start the heist. Uh, Inchi. So you just heard Nil Hor tell another group of people that they have an agent in the museum who is getting them a cut of the proceeds at the gala tonight. You also remember that Galanis' uh, first uh, thing that he asked you after he gave you the briefing from the Golden Keys was to keep everything top secret. Uh, Nilhor, the mind player, looks at you and projects into your mind. Ah, Inshi, the goblin who was not a rat. It is good to see you. How may I be of assistance to you? Hello, Nilhor. Uh, it's uh, good to see you. Uh, you're looking good? Question mark? Um, uh, I, I see the day's treating you well. Listen, uh, I, I'm going to cut the chase with you. I I need a couple of uh, goons, per se. I, I, I'm staging a little 
little heist myself, and uh, need a little favor. Can we, uh, can we perhaps uh, work something out? Pretty boys. Are you freelancing in chief. Oh well, it, I think it as a an opportunity for some of your uh, for some uh, lower uh, members of the Xanathar Guild. I've already proven myself, right, with uh, with the castle enters. Why not give a couple of other newbies a chance that I had? And I've got that chance for you right here. Inji, are you in trouble? Did something happen while you were in the Waterdeep prisons? You are a member of the Thieves' Guild now. We will protect you if you need it. Ah, well, I, I, I need to give the city, like, five gold. I'm not too worried about that. Unless you uh, got any uh, uh, five gold on you. Actually, Inji, you are, you served time for us. You did a job for us. So, we have a reward for you. Not only will we offer you a bed to sleep on, we will offer you ten gold pieces. Thank you, Inchi. Uh, and he uh, you a small, dirty, and wet pouch that has a little bit of blood on it, uh, and it contains ten gold dragons. Uh, Inchi is a little eager to accept this right off. He kind of holds it, weighs it in his hand, even peeks into the bag to look at the coins. But then he kind of shows a little bit of restraint and disappointment in his own restraint. And he looks up at Nilhorn and says, uh, I, I do need these guys tonight. Uh, can we perhaps maybe make a payment of a man or two you could spare? And I, 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 I can give you this back if you want, but I, I, I do, I would like these men, please. He eyes you uh, curiously. It's not often that uh, underlings try to negotiate with him. Go ahead and roll a uh, persuasion check. I'm going to say gotcha. five, difficulty 13. Also, if you have any spells or cantrips that you can cast to help yourself out with this, I encourage you to do so. You don't fucking need it, dude. You got a 19. Congratulations. Oh, sweet. I can't see that, but I'm glad. Yeah, I see it there. Uh, I'm just seeing, like, categories here. I'll try to find it. But 19 works for me. All right. He says... Hmm. Hmm. I normally do not. Tr I normally do not trust a member of the Thieves Guild who would turn down gold. But in she, because of you, we were able to stage a better, more well-armed break-in of Castle and Villa at while you were in jail. We did not find the stone that we were looking for. The the memory stone that we were looking for, but we managed to get out with plenty of valuables, paintings, jewelry, and such. So the Thieves' Guild does owe you to an extent. Fine. Whatever you have to do. But do not wear your purple bandanas. Do not let it get back to me that you started anything you cannot handle. I will do that, sir. And just to be clear, there is gold in this for me. I am just, uh, this is an investment, truly. I I want to, uh, what's the word? I want to test some of your new guys. Say I'm going to test to make sure they're really Xanathar good material for you. And I will be handling their compensation as well. So there's no compensation in your end. I just need the men, if you could point me their way. And she at the Thieves Guild, we love a monster with hustle. Do what you have to do. Make my men better. And if you want to ever move up to be a lieutenant here, you're going to have to make your way through the blood tournament. Uh, and she, hold, holding that purple bandana, like does a salute motion, but with a purple bandana smack in his forehead, says, yes, sir, uh, Mr. Nilhor, I'll do the, wait, what, what's the blood tournament? 
I, it is what anybody that wants to become a lieutenant and run their own crew must prove themselves in front of all of Xanathar's eyes by fighting to the death everybody else who wants to become a lieutenant that night. Oh. Um. Cool, man. Uh, it is glorious. Yeah. The brains, they flood with adrenaline and endorphins and hormones. They're the most delicious to feed off of. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that. Um, where are those guys, Mr. Nilher, sir? Uh, he's kind of looking at you with his head cocked, uh, wondering what your brain would taste like, and he snaps out of it, and he goes, go back, uh, um, uh, the way you came, uh, through the sewer exit. I will have three men waiting for you there. Thank you, sir. Uh, I will, uh, then I'll go and uh, think about this blood tournament thing. I, and I just kind of finger gunning him as I walk back, kind of pissing <laughs> my pants from this dude right here. Uh, thank you uh, again. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I kind of trip on one of his statues uh, of, of fucking victims uh, or whatever. Uh, it so, is uh, a yeah, kobold. Good day to you. It is a kobold that you trip over, which are very small, lizard-looking dragon people. About your size, actually. You notice that Yeah, that's why it scares me even over, more. That, that you tripped over was trying to guard his eyes from something. He has his hand out in front of his face. But you notice at a certain angle, you can see directly into the fear in his stone eyes. You can see that between the fingers. Well, oh, um, uh, oh, sorry, I coughed. Um, uh, goodbye, Snillhor, and I just kind of run out of there. All right. As you run out of there, you reflect on something he said. When they got to Castle Lantern Manor, they were looking for a stone, a memory stone. You happen to know someone who has in their possession a stone that affects memory, the blue stone that Galanis holds on him at all times. You make your way back to the way you came in uh, to the Thieves Guild, and you notice uh, that— Hold on, what? Uh -huh. Sorry, whenever I pass this uh, fighting arena, uh, I assume mm -hmm. there's a couple of folks still sitting in the stands, right? Yeah, there's a couple people sitting uh, in the stands. Some people are smoking. Some people are drinking. Uh, two people are having a fist fight in the stands, uh, and some people are betting on that. Uh, but most of the crowd is cleared out. Uh, the orc uh, is uh, wiping— uh, uh, dirt on his face to try to get all the blood off, and people are uh, handing him money and drinks. And you notice that the uh, the bugbear that he killed uh, by hitting him in the head so hard uh, has disappeared. You can see marks in the sand as it appears he was dragged away uh, towards this staircase to the south. Uh, and you notice uh. that those uh, uh, guards and the dwarf and the mysterious cloaked uh, figure that were up in this area are gone. Uh, I kind of uh, tap the shoulder of someone close by that looks the most reasonable, you know, like, uh, you know, doesn't look like they're about to punch me like the dudes fighting the stands are. You and I just kind of ask. You have a choice between a Drugar and one eye and a goblin with no arms. Uh, because the goblin can't hit me, I'm going to tap the goblin. And I say, hey, uh, was this the uh, the blood tournament with that go uh, with that ogre and uh, that bugbear? Is this the blood tournament? Was this your first day? Yeah, this is where we do the blood tournament. But this wasn't no blood tournament. This was a disagreement about sleeping arrangements that got out of hand. Oh, oh, cool, 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 cool. But the, the this is like kind of what happens in a blood tournament where uh, another guy, like an ogre, kills another guy, like a bugbear, right? Yeah, yeah. And for that one, Xanathar really shows up. He don't watch from the shadows up there. He's in the stands with us because he's one of us, and he wants to see the blood too. Oh, that that's good. I, I definitely want to see him uh that's awesome okay goodbye good sir and i kind of 
I kind of like uh, try to give him a fist bump, but then I forget he has arms, and I just kind of walk away. He uh, goes on. He goes uh, on one foot, and he curls his toes, and he gives you a little toe bump. Oh hell yeah! This actually impresses, and she's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah way to go, it's man." Endearing. Ah. It's it's endearing. You know, what, what's your name, sir? A motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> they call me Kicking Kicking John. Ah, uh, well, kick it, John. Uh, maybe we can kick it sometime. I'll see you later, John. Uh, he reaches his toes up to his forehead, and he, like, extends his big toe, and he gives you a little salute. What the fuck? And, and she just kind of says up his breath and walks away, because that was much more impressive. <laughs> Armless goblin. All right. Okay, so you get to the exit, uh, and like Nilhor said, there are three people waiting for you. They are just three common mercenaries, uh, uh, less powerful than you. Uh, they don't know any magic, uh, and they have uh, basic daggers and no armor. They are brand new recruits. Uh, are you the lot that Nil Hor sent for me? Uh, they look a little bit, uh, one of them looks a little bit scared. Uh, one of them looks a little bit. Uh, unconcerned and one of them looks really angry and the angry one says yeah Nilho told us to follow around some goblin had a job for us that would be me and she what's your name sir my name is is goon one <laughs> goon one goon okay two, and this is goon three goon t- uh, uh i'm sorry who is goon two again that one <laughs> <laughs> uh the Okay, and you over there, you, uh, Goon 3? Is that how it's pronounced, Goon 3? Look, man, we're not telling you our real names. We're not even sure if we won't be in this thieves' guild. Let's see what you got for right. us. Right. Right, uh, okay, I'm just uh, angry one is Goon 1. Uh, you, that doesn't give a fuck, Goon 2. And Goon 3, uh, it's gonna stand up to the occasion. Yeah. All right. All right whatever, all y'all follow me. All right, so you exit the sewers uh, and you pop back up where all your friends are. Uh, your friends are just kind of waiting for you to come back. Um, uh, they're eating little snacks and stuff that they brought bought from a street vendor. Uh, guys, Inchi pops out of the... What the fuck? Inchi pops out of that sewer grate. And uh, shortly after that, three uh, human mercenaries follow after him. Uh, all smelling uh, like the sewers. Hey, friends. I got those mercenaries I was looking for. This uh, over here, that one is Goon 1, I believe you said. That's uh, Goon 2. And, sir, I forget, what is your name over here? Uh, Goon Goon 5. Goon 3. <laughs> uh, it's, it's either... Five or three, but those are my guys. Who the hell is this? And I kind of point to uh, Vinny's character. He was here before you left. Were you not paying attention? What's your name again? I don't know either of your names. He's Goon (laughs) 4. So that is one, two, and three that you brought. He's four, you're related, huh? Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to point at Schizo. He is Goon 6. We do not mm. need to share names, for it is not relevant. Okay, well, uh, Goon uh, <laughs> uh, 5, I am Enchi. It's nice to meet you, Goon 4. Um, I'm confused. Uh, yeah, I've got your guys from the over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I walked a good distance. I'm going to sit over here. Talk to these guys over here. Listen, here listen. The distraction is your plan. It's okay. We, yes. we are the gooners. Oh, <laughs> yes, okay. Mr. All right, yes, we have Mr. A name. Five. The gooners. Wicked City of the Gooners. Let's go. Yes, they. Uh, excellent. Goon City. Of well, I I'm... enjoy that. Well, I'm looking forward to gooning with you guys, but I'm going to sit down and just talk to my guys over here. 
<laughs> no. I knew it as soon as I said it. Yes, dooning, I guess. Okay, dooners. Here's the plan. We are going to go to the dock district. We are going to acquire a cart. And at a designated time, we are going to crash that cart into a pre-placed cart, causing an explosion or a fire. The guards will come out. So you're just doing this on the street? You're not trying to damage the building? I mean, outside damage, like if the wall gets scuffed up, that's fine. If the windows get blown out, that's fine. We're uh, not going you... to go and plant a bomb inside the museum because... no. Okay. Uh, if you wanted to blow out those windows in the cafe, you'd have to put it on the west side of the yeah. of the villa. And remember uh, what I said, it's kind of surrounded by like a grassy uh, courtyard thing because it's part of a, a villa estate. So it's not yep. like right on the street, but there are um, there are paths. That yeah, you drive the so the, the plan is is to have the cart that is pre-placed send the cart into the wall to cut, like, or onto the grass to get it closer as it, like, sets off what is inside, right? Like, there's a crash it. and a bang. So, <laughs> you three gentlemen are going to be tasked with acquiring this cart. We need something that is either explosive or flammable. All right, I'm running a food cart, taking out insurance policy. Uh, you can do that on the condition that you use our cart. Yeah. So why would I take at... insurance policy out on someone else's cart? And I'm going to point at the one with the broken wheel. Okay, yeah, I'll just say that that's with y'all, uh, where y'all are talking in the sea ward. Um, uh, Q dragged it along like it might be useful. Yeah, yeah, I can see him doing that. So, we are going to put this cart in a pre-placed position. You three will go and steal the explosive or flammable cart. Make sure, as you're leaving, to draw attention to yourselves. That way, when you come over, it does not appear that this cart and those with it are a part of what is going on. They are just ha there by happenstance. Bail off of the cart. You know. Uh, loose the horses so they don't get caught in the explosion, because that would just be unfortunate. And the cart will, assuming it's a four-wheeler, will roll into our cart. And explode or catch on fire. Okay. At which point... So, hmm, go ahead. They say, uh, Goon One says, So, you want us to go steal a cart from somebody and then ram it into your broken cart, which will have explosives in it, right? Yes, and Yes, I do wish for you to do that. No, I we might have explosives, yes, but I was thinking because we are near the sea ward, there are many warehouses. Figure out which one has also maybe some explosives. Not too much. We don't want it to be a big bang. Or something flammable like a, a casket of alchemist's fire or something. We don't want anyone to be hurt. That is not the plan. The plan is to make a big enough distraction... So Imchi here, I'm going to point to the goblin, can sneak in mm -hmm. with a cleaning crew, grab a couple items, and leave. No one gets hurt, no one gets caught, and I mean... we get our insurance back on this piece of shit. It's a, it's a, it's a harmless crime. Well, I mean, it sounds like you're getting less incendiary and more explosives. Either works. This I'm sounds a little more like arson than uh, <laughs> old razzle-dazzle with smoke and fireworks here. 
And as someone who's going to be perhaps standing next to the cart, no, I no, must no. say I'm not too fond of explosives. Knowing what is inside the damaged cart, upon seeing this cart come flying towards us, we'll flee and yell, run away! Getting all every uh, all bystanders who happen to be there by happenstance to fuck off. That way, no one gets hurt. Everyone's out of the the explosive range. You three gentlemen can go jump into the sewer, go back to where Imchi found you. He will deliver your fee. Everyone walks away happy and safe. Do, by the way, yeah. cover your faces. It would be a shame if they saw your faces. The rest of us who are by the cart does not matter. Not like we're committing anything. We are just there with a broken cart. And Imchi, for the love of uh, one of the gods, don't get caught. Uh, Inchi has his pants off and he's wringing out sewage from the bottom of his pants. <laughs> and, says, <laughs> and he says, June 5, I, I, you, you have my word. I ain't going back to jail. Ain't no one going back to jail. Guna, uh, one, two, three. I will put in a good word for Neil Whore if you get this done and get, get this done good. And there'll be uh, three gold in for the, each of you. You do it right. Sound good? 30 gold for each of them? So 90 total? Three. 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 Okay. Three. I said three. Okay. Yeah, I was about, like, my eyes popped out for a second. 30? I'm not <laughs> even getting paid 30. <laughs> You're getting 50. But we're all getting paid 50 each, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. but... To pay them 30 gold each, we would be taking a pay cut. Right, right. No, it's just three. Just three. Not gonna lie, I was about to throw hands. <laughs> <laughs> I would not blame you. Uh, and she's still pantsless. He kind of holds his hand out to one of the goons and says, Sound like a plan? Uh, just a second. My boss uh, texted me. Sure. <laughs> okay. Um. So, just to clarify, <laughs> during the cleaning, which happens at two a.m. You are going to stage an explosion on the west side of El Torchal Museum. Your plan is to maybe blow the windows out on the second floor and maybe draw all the guards out. While that confusion is happening, and she ha is sneaking in with the cleaning crew, and when they disenchant the stone for cleaning, he's going to try to escape with it, right? Uh, sounds right. Yeah. Okay. Couple things. Um, one, Kuehl does not have insurance on this cart. The guy not he bought yet. it from. Okay. <laughs> um, and two, how is Inchi getting out with the stone? It is 80 to 120 pounds, and it is too big to fit in the briefcase of holding. Oh, I thought okay. it fit. That's, that's my briefcase. Yeah. No, it's big. It's like the size of a paper bag. Oh, we fit it in it last time so i just assumed that was uh, still good uh, in the play test i was being very nice and forgiving oh okay that okay um i mean he can carry 150 pounds right mm. uh goon five uh, no okay i perhaps have a suggestion we go back uh, to the cafe fire we cause that to explode blow out the second floor I go around and collect textiles to donate to orphans. We <laughs> okay. put them in the wagon. 
You may now jump out the second floor into a cart filled with cloth. Okay. Where are we getting this third cart? Why would I need a third cart when the fire is again inside the building? I would prefer you to not crash into the escape cart <laughs> filled with cloth and set it on fire for when someone tries to jump into it to escape. Oh, that would be hilarious. No, However, I if we did do that, I would also request flaming hoops. You're such an eccentric. Um, all right. Um, that sounds like fellow a Fellow goons. Fellow goons, uh, what was Gooners. the, uh, gooners, sorry, <laughs> Mr. Five, um, what was the enchantment that the egg has currently that we're worried about with the cleaning crew disenchanting? What does that enchantment do again? You were in charge of that, right? It would be an alarm. So, the is plan alarm? is for you to get in. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out the crudely drawn map that we have. So you go in through where is my measuring tape right here? You go in through the front with the cleaning crew. I'm gonna move y'all's tokens. Okay. Out of your way. So you go in. The cleaning crew goes about their business. They'll open up the main office. You go into the main office. Get the powder that I showed you before. So oh, I'm getting the powder. Looks like. The powder would be in her office. Probably in one of the drawers. But, take your time. You know, make sure you don't set off any other alarms. Because it is to be assumed that they will disenchant all alarms once they're in there. So, you will acquire the powder. And then you will go and wait upstairs. So you go here, you go on up, you come on out, and you wait around here. Wait for the wizard to come through and disenchant the door. Reason being, you do not have the means to re-enchant the door. Once the door itself is disenchanted, they will go in. They will start cleaning. You can go in and wait. Just stay out of their way. Once they leave the room, and you are still inside, he will relock the door behind him. Assuming he's competent. At which point, you will use the powder to grab the gem, disenchanting the alarm spell on it, using the powder to open the door, you will Come back out of the room. You will walk across the hallway to the cafe. And there will be a very conveniently placed hole in the wall that you can jump out of. Into a cart um, full of, what did you say it was? Textiles? Yeah. I assume it means like cloth and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, donated clothes for those little orphans. <laughs> He is a cleric, so, after all. It is on par for him to donate materials. So, upon getting into the cart, uh, I don't know. Thoughts? Pinpoint suggestions? So, uh, Two questions. Uh, the cleaning crew will stop in this office where I need to have the powder, correct? It is to be assumed that their job is to clean the museum, and that does include the offices. Okay, okay. And question two. When I grab the egg on the way to this little cafeteria over here with the big hole in it, mm -hmm. this is on the same floor, it's all level. I didn't go up there long. Is this a level... Lower. It is the same thing. I think so, I am going to have to roll this egg. I, I'm, and she cannot carry 120 pounds. I, I'm sorry, guys. That is fine. I can roll it. You will still be invisible. 
just do not draw attention to yourself. Everyone will be concerned about the explosion, the hole in the wall, the fire. You will have time. 120 pound egg rolling across the floor. <laughs> uh, if you have more have to, to add to this plan, by all means, I will not say no. <laughs> Was there a pillow in this room? Uh, goon five with an egg. Because they're going to need to push this egg off, maybe onto a pillow so it'll crack the floor. Or the egg. I mean, we could... And I guess this would be like a... Sorry, I guess this would also be a DM question if there is like a, a pillow, like furniture for a couch or something nearby to move this egg. Um, there's a bunch of chairs in the room uh, for the gala that's happening tonight. Uh, in the unearthed cafe, uh, there are a bunch of sofas and uh, chairs uh, made out of uh, old aged leather and stuffed with uh, wool and cotton. So, I have another suggestion then. What if someone else goes in? Say, uh, I'm going to look at everybody. I'm assuming I'm the strongest. Probably, I, I'm extra, it's not strength. Yeah, definitely, Angie. Indeed, that is so. Right. Um, also, <laughs> another um, thing to point out that I just thought of. Um, there, there, remember, there's a fake stone as well. So the thing is, is that I wonder if they're going to display the actual stone at the gala or... They're going to store it at that same place. So that's another thing to think about as well. So, <coughs> I have seen the real oh, so just... stone and the fake stone. Yeah. I, I wanted to remind... Enchi is not strong enough to carry the egg, but the reason Enchi was originally uh, supposed to do this is because he can turn invisible. That was, that, that was the plan. Yes. I was about so this... to ask, okay. can you not turn others invisible? Uh, let me look into my uh, uh, little book over here, and I kind of pull out a little book that's kind of worn, torn, got some sewage on it now. So I'm just kind of reading up on it while you continue to discuss. Because if we can make, say, me invisible, I can carry the stone and get out. Ah, the book says I can turn other people invisible. Okay. Wouldn't be the first time I've had to get involved personally in a situation, so I do have experience in sneaking. So that is an option. I can go in, grab the stone, get out, jump into the cart of textiles. Fuck it, I'm calling them like clothes. Fucking fancy pants over here. <laughs> I will Why, yes, thank you for thought. noticing. And then we will vacate the premise. And if everything goes to plan, we will re-meet at the tavern. And I will no longer have the gem because I will have handed it off to the proper person. Dr. At Bandles. which point, payment will be distributed. Any questions? No, not me. Okay, do you know what you're going to do for this operation? For me, I, I think um, what I would do is if there's people, guards out there, I could talk to them and kind of, I don't know, come up with some story or something and then, you know, hopefully, you know, if there's a couple of guards out there, then I'll just kind of Make up a story, and then you know if, if if that crash happens or whatever, whenever that happens, then I could say, "Oh no, look, what the hell's going on?" And then maybe they'll bring in more people. You know what I mean? That is a, not a bad idea. Distract them away from the cart of clothes, and we will use that distraction to give us more time to escape. 
Mm-hmm. Now, is the cart they're stealing a hand cart or a what? Like, is it a rickshaw type deal? It will be a drawn cart. Like a like a horse cart. Okay. Um <laughs> go. What's the escape route for once we're out of the building? So the plan Stay is where? Yeah, you're going to drive to a unguard like uh like an empty street. At which point, unfortunately, me and the stone will go into the sewer. We will get away from the open. I will take the stone, put it into a sack, and then I will walk to the professor's home and give her the stone. She can do what she w w wishes with it. At which point, I will meet you all back in the tavern. Uh, you can either... You can dispose of the cart as you please. But these three gentlemen will go and get us the cart of uh, of clothes. Do not get seen. Change of plans. We will meet here. Start the operation once the cleaning crew is inside. And go from there. Questions, concerns... Uh, my role got changed pretty drastically, pretty quickly. Uh, do I just want to cause a ruckus at the front gate, front entrance, or what do you want me? Um, that that actually would be good. Uh, for like right when I'm, you know, just wait for me for talking to, you know, if there's guards out in the front or whatever, I'll just talk to them, and then during my conversation, you could help me with that distraction. Just kind of do something stupid and. They're like, oh, and then right at that moment, then the crash happens, you know? Sounds good, Goon 4. So, here's the other yes. thing, too. I can disguise as a driver, use the stolen cart. We have the textile cart that broke down. I can go to, air quotes, get someone to help with it. You guys jump out, land below, hop into my cart, which will conveniently be passing by at the same time. Because then, as disguise, you guys hop in the back of the cart. I've got Pass Without Trace, which will allow us to take off into the sewers without being able to be magically tracked. And we just set the cart off and let it go down the road. That commotion will distract them. While we take off somewhere to a conveniently located escape. That sounds like a plan. Yeah, that sounds good to me. I mean, at least it's the once we get this out of the building. So, how are we blowing up that uh, cafe window? Who's going to be going in there to uh, plant whatever you need to uh, blow the wall? Well, I was actually just thinking... We do have a mage, a mage in our presence who I am hoping has access to some type of fire magic. Who? <laughs> you. Oh, no. <laughs> you don't even know the most basic fire spell. Hey, if you want me to look a foot taller, I can do that. I can, <laughs> you know, like make it. <laughs> I can I can make a, a but not talking at all kind of appear on the other side of a room but no I I don't I don't do fire. What kind of goblin doesn't do fire magic? One of the dagger. I can stab someone if you want. Okay. One of the goons who is good with a bow. And I'm going to point at the three of them. Um, uh, the one that looks sad all the time goes, I, I, I know how to use a bow. Can you put an arrow through one of those windows above us? 
Yeah, you know, if if everything's bright and like there's no bright lights in my eyes, yeah. Perfect. You will take in a a, an, a fire arrow and put one through the window, causing a fire to break out, damaging the uh cafe to cause the explosion and the ruckus. Question. What's exploding yeah. in the cafe and how did it get there? I thought the other two were still getting that cart of explosives. Question. How's the cart getting to the second floor? <laughs> it, can, it can go underneath. Then... Oh. Clearly, I am missing something. Okay, let's start from the top. The plan was, I go in with the cleaning crew. That doesn't change. Our lovely goblin friend makes me invisible so I can do so. How long does you... that invisibility last? I think it was an hour. Okay. I don't remember, though. That would be a Sean question. Um, uh, I'm sorry, what? How long, How long does, does your invisibility last? last? And let me check the book. Um, the book is not specifying. Oh, 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 one hour, one hour. Okay. So. Okay. You go in with the cleaning crew. I go in with the cleaning crew while invisible. You acquire a bunch of clothings to put into our damaged cart. At yes. which point these t uh, two and I point at the non sad two <laughs> will go and acquire a cart full of explosives. They will bring the cart to a suitable position and once We've decided a specific timing, whether it be five, ten minutes after we get inside, or a half hour, does not matter. We'll, we'll discuss that after we decide what the hell we're doing. Okay. We, we will have that cart charge towards the broken cart, at which point they will divert the cart towards the museum, unlash the horses so they can run away from said cart. The cart can go and hit the wall. And our lovely archer here will f send an arrow of fire, causing the explosion, opening up the hole in the wall for me to escape with the gem. All right. You May I make okay. a slight amendment to this. Uh, yes. So. If you're sneaking in with the cleaning crew anyways, you've got the briefcase of holding. You can sneak the explosives in with the briefcase of holding in the cafe. You can hide them in Ooh. behind the stove, which I'm assuming is basically a cast iron stove. I believe it was, yes. And rig it so that when the chefs are cooking the meal, it will heat up, eventually causing said goods to combust. No. That would blow the wall. That would also possibly kill some of the chefs. We do not wish <laughs> to commit murder. This, this is going to be at 2 a.m. if you're going in with the cleaning crew, so there won't be any staff there except guards. Yes, there will be no one in the building except me, the cleaning crew, and the guards. We wish... Okay, to... so are we planning this heist for during the gala or during no, the middle of the night? Middle of the night. Before the gala. No. The cle... After. Yeah, the like, cleaning crew went in before to clean it to no, prep it for the gala. No. They have and she raises his hand. The rock. They have a sheet over the rock. It's already clean. The cleaning crew does not come in until after the gala. You assumed <laughs> that it was going to be cleaned before the gala. It's not. It's getting cleaned after the gala. Fuck it, we smash and grab, boys. Get your black oh, okay. what, yeah. what time is this I heist? I remember at? saying that last session, too. 
Okay. If y'all are doing it with the cleaning crew, you're going to go in. The gala is tonight at 7, ends at 10. Cleaning crew arrives at 2 a.m. Hey, guys, we may not want to interrupt the gala anyway. Uh, my uh, boss down there in the sewers, Neil Hoare, had a he, – he said he wanted that gala to go well. So can we please not interrupt the gala? Just go to the cleaning crew. Right? Sounds good. Then I'd imagine it'd be pretty trivial to blow the wall at two in the morning when no one's there. That is what I was saying. Sounds good. Why we make it look like it was an accident. All right. St I, think uh, this is a, I think this is a good plan. I think y'all are ready to roll. Um, I just wish to make sure that we all I agree... One thing I'm going to say, you're assuming that that magic powder will work on the stone pedestal. Uh, you don't know that for certain. Oh, I, I have I have means. Okay. Okay. So, we are using the cart that is being stolen as a getaway cart. The broken cart is going to be filled with textiles and used to jump out the window when the cafe blows up. Yes? No? I, that's what I understand, yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. the cart itself is not what is ex exploding. Okay. If that's how we wish to go about it, we could have two carts get stolen. One explosive, one not. Well, why do we need to steal a second cart? Two for the explosives! Which can fit in the I... briefcase of holding. Yeah, I mean, it could, right? Alright, uh, real quick, just make a decision. Are the explosives going to be in the cart outside the museum, or in the briefcase of holding inside the museum? My biggest concern is if I have to go plant the explosives, get the gem, then get out, action economy. I don't think I have enough time to do all that before someone sees me or can stop me. I would agree. I want the explosives pre-planted. That way, at a certain time, I can just beeline it through the wall to get to the, the, the clothing cart. To get onto the escape cart. Right. So, if I'm understanding this correctly, you are the only one going in the building now? That was the entire plan, was we had one person go in and minimize risk. Would you not be able to, like, set a fuse in the oven or something and light it? Because no one's going to check the oven at two in the morning to see if there's something going on in there. <laughs> Uh, I also don't like the idea of just replanting it, because then he's just doing this whole heist by himself while y'all stand outside and watch. Well, I yeah, was I'm trying to explain is that tracker. we're sticking we're sticking pretty close to the cleaning crew while invisible, but still straying away from them would increase risk of setting off an alarm and yeah, enchantments so that they have not gotten rid of. Like whoever's inside has to stick near the cleaning crew till they get into the room. Right. With the gem, right? Because the goal is to get them in the room with the gem. Okay. So they can get the gem and get out. Because once they have the gem, if alarms go off, not a big deal. Because all they have to do is snatch and, uh, snatch and run, right? What we need is for the hole to be open at that point. And for uh, whoever has the gem to just get out. Cause... Okay, my biggest question is, is be shooting the fire arrow at the glass, what is he hitting that causes the explosion? Well, <sighs> I thought y'all were filling the cart with explosives. That's what cart. I thought. Okay, so we're just gonna, okay, we're just blasting the whole wall. Yeah. Okay. In All which right. case, what are you guys landing in? I thought that after y'all made it explode and blew out the window, you were going to cover it with stuff so he could then jump on it. 
Okay. So I, I'm, I'm yeah, going to so we'll have the broken down cart loaded with explosives then freaking yeah. blast that because it's not going anywhere. Use the stolen cart as the getaway cart. Yes. Okay. We can do that. Um, is there any way for them to track this? Well, they're not going to be able to track this bloody cart. I mean, even if they can track the cart, what we need to do is cast pass without trace on me and the stone. You're I can just cast Pass Without Trace on all of us. Once you guys get in my cart, I pop that, we take off down the road, we bail out of the thing, take off into the sewers, they're not getting us. The second that manhole cover closes, unless we've got someone on top of us watching us go in there, we're good. Then that's the plan. Okay. Alright. Seven step plan. Des sneaks in with the cleaning crew while invisible. Cleric is going to have a bunch of padding on hand. Goon 1 and Goon 2 crash the uh, good cart into the explosives cart. Um, Goon 3 does a fire arrow at the broken cart, making it explode and blowing out the window. Des escapes from the cafe window to the sewers. The rest of the crew escapes with the good cart uh, and pass without trace, right? Yeah, that's what I understand, yeah. All right. Sure. It is 9 o'clock. I'm going to say that's good for planning. Let's see. Y'all were making the goons go steal the cart or get the explosives? Both. One is getting oh. an explosive cart. The other mm -hmm. is getting a good cart, which will be filled with clothes that the party will assist in gathering. Me mm -hmm. and Sean will wait for the cleaning crew to arrive. He will make me oh, invisible. Okay, let's do this this all in order. Okay. Who's getting the cart? The the y'all have the broken cart with you. Who's okay, getting so, the other cart? So broken cart is going to be planted by the windows of the cafe. Yes. Goon one will get a empty cart. Horse drawn. He okay. will bring it with uh, Vinny and Schizo to uh, gather clothing to fill the back. Vinny okay. will then become the driver of said cart and get ready to put okay. that cart. Okay, that's... Uh... That's my new details that I'm not concerned about right now. Well, no, I was literally uh, explaining it step by step. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Goon 1 is getting the cart. Goon 2 yep. is getting the explosives. Goon 2 oh. is getting an explosive cart. Okay. So they're going to have to roll for that. Goon 1. Because a... we don't have explosives on hand to put into the destroyed cart. Mm-hmm. Alright. Uh, since you're relying on a mercenary, they're gonna have to do a roll, and we'll see how successful they are. Does anyone have explosives on hand to make this easier, or no? Nope. We do I have mean, time. I would say send two of them to try and go get explosives. It'll be easier for the third one to get a cart. Like, okay. carjacking isn't comparatively hard. <laughs> okay. So we'll send two of them to go get the explosive. So that's three goons put to use. Okay, that means someone is going to have to either have something ready to... Exp you know what? What? Uh, we can take ten minutes to go to the alchemist shop and just buy an, uh, an alchemical uh, fire. Place that in the destroyed cart with a bunch of other shit, you know, that's just laying around. Make it look like it was a cart full of junk, right? So yeah. that way the cart that they steal collides with the damaged cart, causing an explosion because the alchemist's fire will set off the explosives. I will go in with the cleaning crew. Uh, and uh, do the plan from there. 
So, may I ask who's buying the incendiaries the night before an arson? <laughs> the night of an arson. The night of an arson, yes. Surely they wouldn't ask any alchemy shops for who's bought incendiaries recently. It's a good thing we know somebody who can acquire goods for us without any questions. Excellent. Who's that? What's his nuts with the hat? Galanis? Yeah. Okay. We're going okay, to ask so... Galanis to get us explosives to commit an arson. So, so Goon 1 is getting... Goon 1 and Goon 2 are getting a cart with a horse, right? Goon 1 and 2 are getting a cart with a... Uh, with the explosives. So they have Goon... to steal a cart with the horse, right? Yes. All right, they're both going to roll a sleight of hand check. They have to beat a DC 10. That's a D. Hey. What the shit? Okay. They, I mean, both, either... they both did pretty well. So they get uh, one uh, decent looking cart. It is the Sea Ward, so it's probably a noble's cart because um, a lot of nobles live here. Um, and the horse is uh, very nice and very well trained and also looks like it could run very fast. So y'all have the cart, and you're asking Galanis to get you explosives? Galanis to get uh, an explosive, yes. Just something to blow out the wall. Doesn't okay. have to be too big, just enough to blow out a single stone wall. Okay. Galanis uh, was actually on El Torcho Villa, and he saw y'all planning, uh, and you explained the plan to him, and he said, Ah, well, actually, I do believe I have something right here in this very cart that you're going to explode. Thank you for telling me this plan. Otherwise, oof, that would have been bad. And he reaches under the driver's seat cushion, and he pulls out a small multicolored bag, and he dips his hand in it, and he rummages around. You hear some clanking. Blinking, you know that that clanking and jingling is from some golden keys that he has in there. The golden keys that play messages from the golden box. Um, and then he can't find what he's looking for, so he reaches a little bit further in the bag. And then a little bit further, and he's all the way up to his elbow. And he's reaching into this very small bag, and he says, ah, yeah, here you go. And he pulls out uh, two bottles of alchemist fire. Perfect. We will right. use that. And then... Go ahead. Uh, he says, oh, thanks for telling me that, but I need this bag. And he tucks it into his own coat. And that's it for him. What were you going to do next? Uh, Send everyone off to go get the carts. To get the materials for the carts. Uh, Goon... Three plus the party will go acquire another cart that is horse drawn and fill it with just clothes they can find or cloths. So, y'all want three carts total? Two. We have our okay. broken cart. Yes, and Goon 1 and Goon 2 already have another cart. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Cleric, you were going to get some clothes. Were you stealing those clothes or do you know where to get some clothes? Or free. I was going to go for a donation drive, collecting things. Just be the usual door-to-door -door preacher man. Hey, you got right. any old textiles to donate? <laughs> we don't care what it is. Roll me a persuasion check. The higher you get, the more clothes you get. Let's see how well this works. Vinny, why do you have advantage? I shouldn't. Um, it's it's, pro it's probably doing that thing we talked about session one, where it's uh, like not asking him if it's advantage or disadvantage. Mm, yes, mm -hmm. correct. I just clicked on it and it automatically did it. Okay. Well, you uh, did the twelve first, so we're gonna hold you to that. Okay. I all right, so you managed to get eh, a decent amount of clothes, you know. He's only jumping from, you know, 35 feet up. Uh, he'll probably be fine. I mean, 
I guess failing to fill up the cart, I'll just, like, go through the alleys, see what's in, like, garbage. We'll throw the clean clothes on top, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 nice. I'll help around there's and look. Of, there, uh, there's some cafes nearby that, uh, uh, have thrown out their, like, uh, their organic materials, their cast-offs, uh, into, uh, metal bins and clay pots and things like that. Uh, some of it's a little bit smelly, but, you know, you add all this stuff together, you make a soft, mushy, wet, uh, landing pad. Good enough. Don't forget, you can also just fill in the, uh, the bottom with hay. If need be. Going to a farm. I mean, you're, you're sewer crawlers. You're used to the smell by now. Oh, not all of us. Oh, just a I'm, I'm, I'm a sewer crawler. That's about it. All right. I mean, we're going into the sewers after this anyway, so the yeah. two smells will cancel out. Okay. So. All right, this sounds good. Uh, let's take a quick five-minute break, and when I come back, we'll start the heist. All right. Skip forward to, like, uh, 2 p.m., and we'll get this started. Great plan. I I did not see this coming. Okay, nor did I. <laughs> That's okay. That's the point. It's fun. Oh, I hope it's fun. Al, I'm sending you a picture Oh, is uh, it my insurance policy for the cart? How much no. coverage do we have for freak accidents? No, but it is how to change the uh, advantage ruling on uh, Roll20. It was ah, easier good. to do this than to walk you through it. Oh, I keep freaking forgot to. I could have used guidance on that, but meh. Meh. Eh. Ah, eh. You enjoy your various biological matter. <laughs> mm. Hey, at least the getaway cart's the clean cart. And clean whoever's cart. escaping is riding in the back anyway, so you're downwind, so... Jesus Christ. Minor details. <laughs> Minor de details. So how is everyone's night going? Or did everyone step okay. away? No, no, I'm here. And it's been all right. Well, that's good. Playing a lot of Dragon Age before the next game comes out. Yeah, I never beat In Inquisition, so I am i don't think I'm going to be getting the new one. This is my uh, second time going through Inquisition. I like it. I mean, to each their own. Now, the important question is, is, uh, you, you played Mass Effect? Um, way more than Dragon Age, yes. Is Andromeda canon? I hope to God it isn't. Okay, good answer. Oh yeah, you were there for the Mass Effect game. I don't know why I forgot. Yeah, no, no, I mean, that's the... Big sacrifice and everything, but sure, forget you. Yeah, no, you sacked yourself for the party, yeah. Well, uh, technically, Gripple was a sacrifice. I was kind of the suicide. Yeah, potato, potato. Fair enough. All right, gentlemen. Can yes. everyone see the map of the of the place? No, because yes. I have a character sheet blocking my entire screen. Well, you should I, yeah, I, I see it. Okay, good. We are going to use Huel's token uh, as a representative of the cart that you have planted uh, an explosive in, since it's his cart. Uh, where are your 
this is going to be Goon 3 over here, who's going to take the shot with the Alchemist Fire. Well, okay, so we're putting the Alchemist Fire in the destroyed cart. Yes. Which we also filled up with other junk. The explosive cart is going to be rammed into that, causing the explosion. So you're putting the explosives in the nice, noble cart. You're going to ram that into Huel's broken cart, right? Well, the two, the two that went and stole the explosives, right? The Lannis gave you the explosives. He gave us a detonator. Okay. Okay, then the you, goons you, need to roll for finding explosives real quick. That's what I thought they did, because there were two of them. We needed a way to set them off. That's why we asked Glanis for, like, an alchemist to fire or something. Okay. I'll say that, uh... Because they got a 14 and a 19. That's pretty, pretty good. I'll say yeah. that they found, um... They found, uh... Hmm. Like, smoke powder barrels would be fine. Yeah, yeah they found a smoke powder powder barrel uh at a guard's post uh and they snatched it okay and one of your goons is going to be driving this cart right uh yes their job is to get that cart to crash into the stationary cart to detonate the explosives to destroy the wall Okay. The reason the orange orange goon here is going to be the cart filled with explosives. And if he can save the horse by disconnecting the saddle from it, so you know, mm -hmm. he can just ride the horse off and be like, "Oh no, the cart went out of control." All the better. Be a shame if we killed okay. a horse for no reason. It would be. So, that destroys the wall at which point I get the gem, I run out, jump into the second cart that comes by, full of clothes, and we make our escape. Okay. Alright, and what's the third goon doing? Because you got one driving the cart, one shooting the arrow, and one... Uh... One well, left. two What's of the goons went to go and get the explosives. Okay, they have it. They have the cart. They have the yeah. explosive. You're all together. Uh, you're staging yourself and, right now. Yeah, the third goon with the arrow is uh, not happening. We have two goons with the explosives. Okay. One with the party. Me and uh, Sean are waiting for the cleaning crew to show up so I can go invisible and go in with them. Okay. I mean, if need be, I could shoot the arrow when, when you know, time. I mean, that's that can be a backup if the cart does not detonate the alchemist's fire to detonate the smoke powder. Yeah, I could, I could stand okay. by just in case, you know, it doesn't explode. Okay, we can do that now. That works. Because it sounded like we were starting to overcomplicate it again. <laughs> okay. Um, and our cleric, what are you going to be doing? He was the one driving the clothing cart that I jump into to escape in. Okay. Okay. Which which cart has the clothing in it? The broken cart or the explosives cart? Here, I'm just going to write it out one second.
Okay. So the explosives are in the nice noble cart that they stole, right? That's going to get rammed into the broken cart. The broken cart has all the clothes in it, right? No. The bro- we're, we're taking two carts. So there's three carts total. Yes, that was okay. decided just before the break. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So So yeah. The two goons went that rolled the 14 19 went for the explosives. Okay. One goon plus Vinny and Schizo went to go get a cart and filled it with clothes. It didn't have to be stolen. It could it could just be borrowed. Okay. And then while they're doing that, Sean and I are prepping the broken cart with junk and the alchemist's fire. And then we're going to go fuck off and wait for the cleaning crew. And when everything's in position, explosive cart hits broken cart. And then clothing cart comes by. I jump in clothing cart. And escape. Okay. All right. The and she's also never made. Changing. And oh, she has also never made changing. someone else invisible. So he's also just reading. He, his nose just in the book, reading over and over to make sure he gets it right. Yeah. Reading your spell book. Okay. Yep. So the broken cart has the alchemist fire and junk in it. Noble's cart is going to crash into it with the alchemist fire, with the uh, smoke powder, and make a big mm-hmm. explosion, right? Yes. Okay. And then our cleric is waiting with the other cart. I'm going to call that the old farmer's cart with all the clothing for you to jump into. Yep. Yes, that sounds correct. Oh, you're jumping into a moving cart now. Oh, it doesn't have to be moving. It can stop to, like, gaze at the explosion explosion and shit. Okay. We got enough to get started here. All right, it is around 2 a.m. You guys staked out El Torchal Villa all night. You saw the gala start. You saw many nobles go into the building, a few guild masters. You even saw the ruler of Waterdeep, the elected open lord, Lairal Silverhand herself, step out of her elegant white cart and uh, walk on into the gala. Seeing her even from far away, was magical. She is a legend in all of Faerun, and she brought peace to Waterdeep by getting the gangs and the violence under control and getting the nobles and the guildmasters to work together. You see that the gala goes on for quite a while. People sometimes step out of the museum to smoke on a pipe and then head back in. But at around uh, 10 p.m., everyone starts to leave. Uh, around midnight, uh, curator Alda Arkin leaves. She reaches into her clutch, she takes out a key, and she locks the main door of the museum. And then you see that she does not walk off the same direction everybody else does. She actually walks over to the right of the museum and disappears out of sight. After waiting a couple of hours, um, around 2.15, Four people in the Sweepers Guild's uh, uniforms uh, roll up to the museum. They look like they have been already working for a few hours. One of them uh, has a pointy hat on, uh, and he walks up to the door, and he opens up a little scroll, and he speaks a word, and you feel some magical energy disappear, and him and his cleaning crew walk through the doors of the museum. Destry and Inchi, I'm going to say y'all were hiding right here. Y'all had plenty of time to do it, so don't worry about making a stealth check. Uh, you see that the cleaning crew was about to enter into the museum. What do you do? Uh, and she looks over at, at a... I don't even know his fucking name anymore. He looks at uh, goon number four. Destry. And says, uh, Destry. Destry. You know my name. You know I'm Destry. <laughs> Uh, all right, Desri, you ready for this? I suppose. Uh, and she places his hand, like, you know, like, kind of on, uh, Desri's thigh, I guess, because, you know, that that's how tall I am. Nice. 
<laughs> and uh yeah emphasizing with uh emphasis with every uh fuck, what's the word syllable and kind of like uh bouncing on his heel he's just bibbity bobbity bam and uh turns uh destry invisible eh eh how's that Bam. I don't see what you did. Fantastic. Destry. It's Destry to you, you look no different at all. But in chief, you see spreading out from his thigh, Destry uh, himself, his clothes, all go invisible. His imp, Raven, however, does not go invisible. Oh, hey there, little guy. Where'd your master go? Hmm. Uh, he's actually still just sitting on Destry's shoulder, so it looks like the bird is just floating in the air. Uh, and it goes, mm. you silly goose, he stands beneath me, as he always does. But he doesn't go in the sewers. That can't be possible. He's I'm too gonna... nice and, 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 and you know, fancy for that. I'm going to grab the raven, put it on top of his head. You will stay and communicate with me. And I will tell you when to send the carts. Uh, I felt like I just like... said that weird. Yeah, you kind of did. But it doesn't You like will stay being... with him. Mm -hmm. I will communicate through you to them as to when to send the carts into each other and to bring out the escape cart. Understood? If you do this, more Destry, you will have to leave your mind open to me, which you rarely do. But I welcome the opportunity. You know he's not going to do anything to you or, like, fuck with you. He's just going to, like, psychically say a bunch of weird, creepy shit to you. I know he's going to, so I'm going to ignore him. And shoot I'll reach up and off. pet the thing on my head. Good, birdie. Okay. And I so eat the little thing. Go get get the others ready. I will signal you when the time is uh is here, and I'm going to shuffle over quietly to the cleaning crew. Okay, how close do you want to stick to the cleaning crew? I want to be within ten feet behind them, not too close, but close enough where I can get closer if need be. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, do a stealth check with advantage. Uh, da, 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 da. By the way, I have guidance. Nice. Yeah, use that all you want. Right, Vinny? I have guidance. You would have guidanced me prior. Yes. Sorry, I had to fill that in. It's okay. You can answer for him. He would have guidanced me. <laughs> Uh, and Sorry, then... wrong button with the headset. Um, <laughs> yes, as long as the duration would have allowed for it. Yes. Which is one minute. That's fine, we can make this work. Uh... Perfect. We're at a ten. Oh, I don't even think I needed to make you roll for that much. Only if they Perfect. Attacked. Okay, so you stick about 10 feet behind them. As they walk in, uh, you see that wizard uh, uh, says, Do be careful around the magic statues. We do not want them to get animated. I'm going he to says, keep... pointing to these two statues of human women. I will keep that in mind and avoid the statues. Okay. Inchi uh, and Vinny, you just made your friend Destry invisible. Uh, where are you off to next? Uh, I assume we go join our uh, other friends with the carts. I, you know, like an alleyway or somewhere, or so that it's not completely mm -hmm. noticeable. Uh, and still petting the uh, thing on my head and say, "Come on, little birdie, we name you little Inchi, and we're gonna go find our friends." Okay. So y'all are on the cobblestone street, or the cobblestone path that's closest to El Torchal Villa. I assume you kind of have your two uh, carts 
staged a little bit away so it doesn't look suspicious. And Huel's cart is already in position, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, Blinken, what are you doing right now? Are you waiting as well? Well, yeah, I would be in a position that I think would be, you know, as a vantage thing, just in case, you know, things doesn't blow up so that I would shoot, you know, an arrow on the alchemist fire or whatever to trigger the explosion. Okay. I'm going to say you're about 30 feet away from Huel's cart. You are okay. hiding in some shrubs, like a circle of shrubs around a tree. So it's a great little spot for you to crouch down and hide there. Okay. Everybody yeah. else is on that cobblestone path. Uh, we got that one goblin with the clothes cart and one goblin with the with the smoke powder cart. Okay. And Blinken, that other goon, is, is also right here. Uh, he can also help you take the shot. It's the sad one. Uh, okay. As y'all have been waiting, he's just like, man, I feel like I just wait for stuff my whole life. Yeah, you tell me about it. Life sucks, huh? Yeah. He's going to, like, play off with it. Yeah. He says, have you ever seen this group of bards named the Doom Raiders perform? I really like their music. It gets me. It gets it gets all the sadness and fucked up shit that's up here, man. You should check them out. Yeah, maybe I should, and I just let out a loud, loud like, sigh. Yeah, they play at the the beer golem. Um, maybe maybe we could go sometime. Yeah, maybe yeah. If this job goes well, maybe we'll uh, get together and you know check this band out, this bard group. Oh yeah, straight up, man. That's cool. Nice. Okay, Destry, you are ten feet behind this cleaning crew. They are taking their time cleaning up this lobby area. There is also one guard patrolling this area. He gives a nod to the cleaning crew and they nod back. They seem to know each other. Uh, it's a pretty standard procedure for them. The lobby is a little bit dirtier than uh, when you saw it uh, this morning. There's been a lot of foot traffic through here, but you also notice uh, discarded uh, plates, discarded cups, uh, glasses uh, that used to hold, or liquor bottles. Like, Fancy glass bottles that would have had liquor. Uh, you notice some confetti and streamers out along the floor as well. It looks like the gala was a rip roaring good time. What would you like to do? Uh, okay. Your plan I... at this point was to get your hands on some of that powder. Yeah. So I'm going to actually go over to the mage. Mm -hmm. uh, knowing the cleaning guild, do they protect their mages from enchantments? You do not know the cleaning guild well enough to, to know that. To know that? Okay. So you'll have to take a guess. Okay, so... I'm going to make sure that I cover my face with uh, some of my clothes. You know, uh, I'm assuming I would have changed into a set of different clothes breaking in, right? Oh. Shit, yeah, I forgot to ask. What's everybody's crook look? Stereotypical crook. Black clothes, oh. black mask. All right. I am using disguise self to look like just a regular farmer John with his farmer cart. There we go. All right. I'm a slightly out of shape, middle aged, balding dude who looks like he's been out at the bars all night and will, in no fact, one. booze cruise my way home. No one will look twice at that. <laughs> Sir, you can't no change in carriage. Okay. The reason uh, I'm specifying that I did change my clothes is because this should not break invisibility because I did not cast invisibility, so I'm not concentrating on this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to cast Suggestion on the mage. Suggestion. 
the spell invisibility the spell ends for a target that attacks or casts a spell does and it okay right but you, Invi you are you are the target okay uh so then i'm not going to do that cuz i forgot it broke if i did anything yep okay you can How... get to cover break invisibility and then cast a spell No, because they have to be within range to hear me. Yeah, like if you duck well, behind If I this... break cover and yell, hey, go do the thing! Yeah, yeah. Just letting okay. you know. You know, there's counters yeah, and corners to hide behind. I'm going to patiently wait and guesstimate how long it'll take for them to get upstairs. Okay. Um... Uh, also, Vinny's going to be right back for two minutes. Okay. Um, remember you thought that maybe the curator would have some of this powder in her office? Yes. Uh, maybe the guards would have it in their room up top, up here. Uh, or you could snatch it off of a guard. The wizard, the sorcerer, appears to be using uh, counter spell and code words to get through some of these alarms. Counter spell and code words? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um... What code words is he specifically saying? Uh, you noticed that he said something when he came up to the door. Uh, since then, he hasn't really uh, done anything, but you just know that's how this thing would typically work. Like, that's how your family manners were cleaned. Okay. Uh, by people, people that just casted Counterspell anytime they needed it. Okay, um, I don't have Counterspell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's casting Counterspell. Okay, I'm gonna, so he's just going around ca Counterspelling stuff so he can, he can clean it? Yeah, what, when they need to clean something. Uh, okay. They haven't, you know that's what he's going to do. He's not doing that right now because it's not needed in this area. Okay, well, how long is it, do I think it's going to take for him to get there? Uh, you don't know. You don't know his path through the building. Uh, he might spend a lot of time down here on first floor. He might go straight up to the second floor. You don't no, know. no, no. I mean to the owner, like the uh, curator's office. Oh, yeah, that's right here. Yeah, has he done that one yet? Like, has he pre-opened the door um, for them? Uh, if you wait a few minutes after they finish cleaning this lobby area, they might go to that. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait a few minutes. Um keeping track remember, of the time. Remember, there is gold in the till in both of these counters up top. Yeah, I don't have that. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, back outside, uh, Blinken, you are still hiding and waiting. Is there anything that you would like to do? Um, I mean, not specifically. Maybe I'll just, uh, you know, passing time, talk to you this sad guy every once in a while, you know, kind of suggesting, have you ever, you know, been a fan of this whatever guild you're in? <laughs> like, I'm trying to come up with, like, conversations while I patiently wait for the cars to show up. Just, just he only gives, like, one-word responses. But, yeah, I knew about him for a while. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. You know, I'm part of a guild here, too. Blah, blah, blah. And, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, a legit guild with benefits. That sounds pretty good, man. Uh, yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, Inchi and Vinny. Uh, Vinny, what was your character's name again? Uh, Vinny's AFK for a minute. Okay. But his Inchi. character's name was... I'm just scrolling back up. I don't know how the how the how do you pronounce your character's name? Skazafrad. Skazafrad. <laughs> All right, put the bird on. I'm All sure right. the bird knows how to pronounce people's yeah. names properly. All right, Inchi, you know that uh, you can feel your magic still working on Destry, so you know that he is still invisible. The bird that's standing uh, on your head is. Uh, 
pecking at like the top of your head. He's finding the little hairs that grow uh, like around your ears and he's biting them and trying to pull them out. Hey, hey, quit that little inchy. And I just kind of flick at him. My name is Gaflakaza, not little in inchy. Self too. <laughs> All right, uh, Skaz, uh, you're just waiting. Oh, I yes, he yes, he is waiting. Yeah, I um, am. Okay, I'm just, basically... keep, I'm just gonna keep coming back to y'all. Y'all tell me when you want to start the cart stuff, or if there's anything you want to do, or anything like that. Oh. Question, One is that thing. concentration or invisibility applying just to uh, Destry or me as well, since I'm the one that casts it? That's you. Since you cast it, you have concentration on it, but Destry cannot perform an attack or cast a spell while he's invisible. It will break the magic. So technically both of us, then, because I can't do any ma other magic with concentration going on. Yeah, yeah, but you could attack someone, okay. uh, and that wouldn't break the invisibility. Uh, Gotcha. You just can't cast another spell. All right, back okay. inside the museum, the guard changes his location. <clears throat> uh, the cleaners uh, work their way over to these exhibits uh, over here to the left. Uh, the sorcerer uh, comes through and casts counter spell in this location and this location up here, and the, the cleaners begin working their way through these small exhibits. These are a bit easier to clean. It looks like not much foot traffic was over here today, so they will probably be done soon-ish. Okay. Um... Okay, I guess I'm just gonna wait patiently. Uh, while they're doing that, I'm going to carefully make my way up to the tills and not do anything and just stay the fuck out of the way because I don't have any means to disenchant the locks on the tills. Uh, you should perception check those tills and see if there's actually locks on them. I guess I could. You don't have to. <laughs> no, I'm going to. It's too late. You talked me into it. Why is that advantage? That would just be a normal 11. All right. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. No, I left my advantage turned on. That's why. Okay, that's fucking weird. Um, okay, so you notice that uh, this till, uh, it has a little lock mechanism on it, but it is not engaged right now. So it's just open? Yeah. Well, fuck me sideways. I guess I'm just going to carefully, when no one's looking or around, just open the till and grab the money and put it in my pocket. All right. You get yourself. One D6 gold pieces and two D6 silver pieces. So we'll just call that two D6 gold pieces. Nine. There you go, buddy. You got nine gold pieces. I'm just going to put that in this tab here. So I know it's separate. All right. Uh, All right. Uh, As I... you slip that into your pocket, you notice there's a little piece of paper on the counter. It is that full inventory of the... or actually over here where you are, uh, with that same perception check, you notice that there is a full uh, inventory of what's supposed to be in the tills. You notice the till where you're at, where they sell reproductions of famous paintings. There were supposed to be 12 gold pieces in there tonight, and you only got nine out of it. Mm, be a shame. Okay. Uh, similarly, this till is also not locked even though it has a lock. Well, I guess I'm going to have to go and grab stuff out of that one, too. All right. Roll another 2d6. Two. 
So you got six gold pieces out of that. That same paper says that there should be nine gold pieces in this till. So Someone both tills. handing the, uh... Mm-hmm. Exactly. Hello? Oh, well. Okay. As you do that, and you wait just a little bit, this guard is clearly very bored. And you notice as he walks that he walks a little bit sideways and down, as if he might be just a little bit drunk. Okay? Everybody outside, did you all want to do anything? Um... N not me. Again, I'm just kind of striking up conversation and, you know, again, waiting. Okay. Uh, Skaz. I'm, uh, What's up? I'm just arguing with the thing that's on my head trying to peck me. Call me Mr. Skazaflasblatz. That's my name. Well, Itchy, you need to calm the fuck down. This hurts. Uh, uh, like two hands appear out of its mouth and force its beak open, and then a little tiny creature with horns in its head and red skin pokes out of its mouth and goes, It's Mr. Kappafrakana! Stop sticking your tongue out at me and get back in there! It slams the beak shut. Um, Skaz, you are, are you back? Yep. All right, you are standing next to the driver of the cart that you have stuffed, uh, the old farmer's cart uh, that you have stuffed with clothes and uh, trash to make it soft. And he's the, the angry one, and he's getting a little bit jumpy. He's like, man, man, this is taking too long. We're just out here in the open, and we're all exposed, and I'm doing this for three gold coins, really? Would you like to say anything to them to calm him down? Yeah, well, you just need to relax. I mean, look, we're just driving on here. Nobody's going to suspect anything unless you make them suspect anything. And we've got magic to cover our tracks. They're not tracking you down unless they've tied a rope to you when we're making a run for it. He goes, yeah, yeah, whatever, man. Yeah, okay. And he puts his arms back and he leans back uh, in his seat. And he starts feeling at something that he has in his pocket. It looks like it's a small bag of something. Back inside the museum, uh, the cleaning crew comes back over. And the sorcerer uh, disenchants or casts counterspell on this door right here, Destry. Okay. And uh... two, two of the cleaning crew go in. And uh, one begins cleaning the stairs up here. What do you do? Or, uh, what's in there again? This middle room was storage room. South room is curator's office. And then this room up here is the guard's okay. room. Uh, that guard that was stumbling, that's him here? Mm -hmm. He's a, Nope, that's the sorcerer that disenchanted the door. I thought this that was is him. This is the guard. No, no, no. no. The one labeled oh. guard is the guard. I don't see the... him. You can't see this guy right here? No, I don't see the label. Okay. So, oh. uh, fuck it. We ball. Okay. Um. <clears throat> that guard is, like, slightly drunk. Slightly drunk. I'm going to uh I'm going to go near him and make it look like he dropped something that the wizard will hear and turn around and be like what the fuck and hopefully confront him I'm sorry, what did you say you wanted to do? I'm going to make it look like he uh, bumps into something and makes it look dirty, like a flower pot or something. Okay. Yeah, there's something on the desk Because right he's here. clearly, like, you know, staggering, and you said that yeah. yourself, right? Yeah, he's, like, leaning up on this desk. He looks very tired and a little bit drunk. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get behind the desk. Mm-hmm. 
you know what? Is he is his arm resting on some parchment? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of lazy. Cool. I'm going to make that uh I'm going to make that parchment kind of fall out of the way and make it so his arm slams into the table and the flower pot. Okay. Um you know, just a little a little pull of the parchment or something. Yeah, yeah. Because you're invisible, I'm going to give this to you. And he wasn't really paying attention. You keep pushing Andy's this, fine. though. He'll roll perception checks, okay? Oh, yeah, no. I'm not going to actively, like, try to fuck with him. But, you know, okay. this could, he could chalk this up to, oh, fuck, maybe I did drink too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So he kind of stumbles. He falls over. He pushes over this flower pot, the rose that was in it, and the dirt spill out on the counter and the floor. He goes, oh, oh, oh. <clears throat> oh, come on, come on, Skyvis, keep it together. All right, what did you want to do after that? Uh, I'm hoping that the mage noticed. And he's going to be like, the fuck, man? More work for us. The mage looks over and he kind of gives him an annoyed look. But you notice that the mage doesn't really do any cleaning. Uh, he uh, whistles at the guy that's working on the stairs, points to the dirt, and the guy working on the stairs comes over. Okay. Uh, at which point, I'm going to... Okay, so he's distracted now. There's a guy cleaning who's probably bitching and moaning at him for making more work. Yep. Uh, during this whole kerfuffle, I'm going to just take a little handful of that powder. From the guard? Yeah. All right, I'll give it to you. I'll say he feels bad, and he's kind of trying to help the guy clean it up a little bit, so he is extra distracted, and you are invisible. You can make a sleight of hand check to get in there and see it. If he just, if he notices you, if you fail this check, though, your invisibility breaks, okay? With advantage? Yep. Okay. Yep. DC... Because of all the stuff going on, eight. Fifteen. Fantastic, man. Uh, let me use the bathroom real quick, okay? Okay. Yeah. He's going to do the, the bathroom plan for Mass Effect. Oh, God, not Operation... Uh... <laughs> all right, he's thinking about how he's going to kill you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably. It's the only logical conclusion. Well, if it makes you feel any better, we're going to keep the bird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank God. I mean, he's probably going to keep you guys as a pet. What do you mean? I'm opening a construction company with him. <laughs> oh, God. Construction slash insurance. But, you know, just like going after claims collection, not handing out policies. That's crazy. In this climate, with this many arsons? <laughs> oh, All right, guys. Is everyone still here? At yeah. the moment. The... All right. So, Destry, you get the, your hands on this powder. You get your hands on the stack. I'm going to say the stack that actually has the silica stone in it. That okay. you rub to get the powder on your hands. Um, I'm going to say 30 minutes has elapsed. That's how long you had to wait for this to happen. Okay? Okay. All right. Outside. Um. Uh, Blinken, you're talking to the guy, and he's actually opening up when you asked him about that band that he was talking about, the group of bards. And he goes, yeah, man, they were like, they were really cool. They started out as street rats like me, the Doom Raiders. That's the band I'm talking about, the, the group of bards. They started out as a group of street rats, you know, and he starts repeating himself like that. And yeah, that sounds like, interesting. 
and then they they were these big adventurers for a while and then and they retired here to Waterdeep. Uh, one of their members died, and I, I thought that would be good. I thought we'd get some good music out of it, but they haven't they haven't played any shows in a long time, man. Uh, interesting. Have, uh, you, let me ask you something. Have you heard of uh, something called lattes? Lattes? Yeah, lattes. Now I'm just going to go on a deep... Yeah, what's that? I'm going to go on to like some deep lore to like some gnomish people who had <laughs> sort of like nice. came up with coffee grounds and stuff. Nice, nice. Tell him something, or you talk so that he's not talking. Yeah, yeah, so I'm taking over the conversation. Yeah, okay. Uh, Inchi, uh, you and the raven are now, like, wrestling. He's not on your head anymore. He's running all around your body as you're trying to, like, catch him. Yeah, and, and she's just kind of, like, smacking himself because he doesn't got quite great dexterity. So he's just, you know, keep trying to go for the bird again, increasingly, you know, mad at him. I'm trying to even punch that bird uh, by now. It's like, hey, get back here, little itchy. I'm about tired of your when shit. When you punch it, it's so weird. It feels like wet and slimy, but also mm. really dense and warm, even though it looks dry. Uh, and, she, and she's punched a turd before he's used to it. Okay, yeah. You just bounce off it completely. Uh, yes. Gad, uh, you're kind of like looking up at the stars, admiring uh, nature and all of S S uh, Sune's beauty that she creates. Uh, and you hear from the cart beside you that uh, human, that angry human go. You hear him uh, breathe in through his nose really quickly. And then he does it again. Oh. I'm just going to take a little quick look over at him and see what he's doing. He's shoving something into his pocket and he's wiping a, a white powder off of his nose. <laughs> and he says, man, um, look, it's, it's going on too long, okay? We, we should all go in there. We need to back him up, okay? Well, relax. The children are having fun in the other cart you can see. You've had yourself a little bit of the nose candy, as we like to call it. <laughs> if you want to kick back here, have some grapes. Watch the entertainment. Once this happens, if you want, I'll take over the driving for you. No, no, man. I'm good to drive. Uh, and he takes that grape and he starts, like, really obsessively peeling the skin off of it. Okay. Back in the building. Uh, Destry, you have your hands on one of these silica stones. What yes. would you like to do? I would like to pray to whatever god will listen. And I'm going to move to the supervisor door. Okay. Yes, I am not going to move there in one turn. I am going to take my time. We're not... Yeah, we're not actually on turns right now because we're kind of going off of what you and the cleaning crew do uh so yeah i'm gonna take my time they mm -hmm. uh you know i'm gonna let them do all their thing and i'm going to maybe uh open the door with the stone okay you rub your hands on that stone you get some of that purple crystal powder on you uh the purple crystal powder you assume uh, might be visible, even though you are invisible. You can't really tell, because to you, you don't look invisible at all. But you reach your hand out, you put it on that doorknob, you twist it, uh, you can feel it unlock, and no alarm sound goes off, and you can step in to the curator's office. This office has a solid oak desk that stands on a plush carpet in the center of this office. In the southeast corner, a strange human-sized doll is poised in an elaborate silk dress. Uh, you can see also, this is uh, Alba's desk right here, and you can see the green dress she had on earlier today when she was giving you a tour has been hung up on a hanger uh, on the left side of the room here. All right, so what I'm going to do 
mm-hmm. is I'm going to close the door very quietly behind me. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go and check the drawers to see if the... Hold up. You mm-hmm. you said she took the key with her when she left, right? Yes, I did. Okay. Change of plans. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing any of that. I have the stone, and I'm at mm-hmm. the counter. Uh, hey, just to let you know, if you want to check if an alarm is on something, you could do an arcana check or a perception check. Yeah, no, I'm not worried about the arcana checks. Okay. Um, I'm just retconning what I just said. Sorry, is that cool? Okay, that's fine. Okay, because you said she took the key. I would have seen that. Yes. I go upstairs quietly. And oh. if I remember correctly, Hold there... Up. Hold up. I'm listening. Where's your token? I moved it. As you get to the top of these stairs... Right here, literally, as you step off the last step to this little section right here, mm-hmm. you hear a soft do, 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 and you know that that is the alarm spell. Cool. I'm still quiet or invisible, so that is fine. Yes, you are. You see this guard down here goes, Oi, Oi, what was that? <clears throat> and he goes and he bangs on this door right here and he says, Hey, sleepyheads, what are you jerk fucks? Get out here and help me. A few seconds later, a guard comes out of that room, and they both look around the stairs here. Okay, I'm going to stay out of their way. Okay. And uh, As you come up to the second floor, you are in front of the Allosaurus exhibit. All right. The animatronic Allosaurus exhibit, and there is one guard in this room. Okay. Um, I'm going to basically go the long way around so he doesn't look at me. Okay. And... Roll, real quick, roll a stealth check with advantage. Okay, one second. Uh, advantage stealth. Two and nine. So as you walk past the Allosaurus right here, mm-hmm. you seem to trip its little motion, uh, sensing magic, and it goes, arr, arr, arr. And it shifts positions a few times, and that guard goes, Oi, what's that? And he begins walking along the base of the Allosaurus exhibit, looking at uh, all around it. Uh, I'm going to sidestep. Okay. And get over here. Okay. And hopefully before he rounds that corner, I'm going to sneak into the uh, hidden doorway that we discussed uh, a couple sessions ago, using the stone to uh, hopefully nullify whatever magic's on it, just slip in and hide. Okay, since you are moving that door, I'm going to ask you to make another stealth check. Just a straight stealth check, no advantage. Yep. Please be good. 17. Okay. We're good. Perfect. So you time it, you wait until he's like looking at this base, definitely not looking at you at all, and you silently silently slide this door open and you step in right here to this secret little compartment. It is 10 feet long and 5 feet wide. I'm going to very, very carefully close that sound bitch. Fantastic. Your stealth roll will apply to that too. Point. Okay. Going back to the crew outside, uh, Blinken, uh, were you able to keep the coffee rant going for a while? Oh yeah, I'm gonna go on and on about like, oh yeah, I know this, uh, it's kind of weird that I saw this, uh, you know, female 
or trying to you know throw some interest on this latte and i was all in, you know interested on it and i actually tried it and it's not too bad and you know it just gives you energized and i'll just keep going on and on this dude like he's just so happy that someone is talking to him he's like always going like, uh-huh yeah uh-huh yeah he seems like he's paying attention to what you say <laughs> uh inchi uh i'll say uh that the bird well what do you want to, what do you want to be happening right now inchi well, I was wondering if we could hear the alarm that went off from outside at all. Um, you know what? Yes. Uh, you can hear it faintly. It's muffled by all the stone walls, but especially coming out from the second floor where there's those tiny glass windows, you can hear, do, do, do. Okay, uh, I was still tussling with this bird, but then whenever I hear that, I say, hey, 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 calm down. You hear that? Guess you might be in trouble. Hey, guys, you hear that? And I just kind of uh, try to get the attention of the others. What? what, what and I'm like looking at, uh, <laughs> I'm looking at Inchi. What? What's going on? As soon as she points it What's out, that? you can hear, do, do. What you know is the alarm noise. Shit. Uh, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move closer to the, to the entrance. I'll keep low though. To the main Bird, entrance. Stay here. Right. Mr. Gobblesnivel uh, does not like being left alone. Ah. Uh, stay with the sad one. Uh, he'll probably listen to you. <laughs> Great. I shall offer him a grape. The crow comes by and it snatches the grape out of your hands and then perches on the shoulder of the sad one. Uh, and the bird is also enraptured by Blinken's uh, uh, tail of coffee because <laughs> the bird can tell that Blinken's doing it just to keep the other guy from talking. <laughs> uh, so really what I want is just to get close enough to the entrance where I'm still concealed hidden but you know just so i can be more prepared if i need to do anything all right um go ahead and roll a stealth check because you're by the doors there are torches here uh there are columns sure but i'm not right by the doors but i'm talking about like maybe across the street or something from the uh, museum okay uh it's yeah, more of a, a, a courtyard so uh you'll need to roll stealth regardless there's no sure. natural place for you to be here this late, unless you're a student. I'm sure enough to be a student, but let's see still. Mm -hmm. Still? Nice. 14. All right. Uh, what's your movement speed? Uh, movement speed is 30. 30? All right. I'm going to say that you're about 15 feet from the door. So you could get to the door, open it, and get in the museum in one turn if you needed to. Uh, right. Gaz, uh, do you want to do anything about the alarm? Or do I'm anything? I'm trying to distract Buddy to keep him from freaking wigging out. Uh, he's he's wigging out. He's concerned about the amount of time it's taken. What do you tell him to try to calm him down? I'm going to try and gaslight him and convince him it's only been five minutes. <laughs> That's pretty good. I'm going to be like, dude, it's late, you're tired, you know, I have it all the time when I get in my own head. It's only been five minutes. Okay. Oh, your okay. powder is just slowing <laughs> time down for you. You know, you've been sitting there like, man, you peeled that grape super fast. That was like 15 seconds. I thought I'd been doing this for 10 minutes. Oh my God. Um, he says, okay, man. Okay. Hey, th hey, thank you. Thank you. I'm just wigging out. It's, it's a stressful job. You sound like you know how to party. And he pulls out that little white bag from his uh, pocket. <clears throat> and he says, uh, you want some? After, man. After party is going to be great. We're going to get some yeah. drinks. We're going to get that going. Tell you what. I'll let you know. You lie down in the back. I'll take the reins. I'll let you know when we're good to go. 
He goes, uh, oh, oh, okay. And he starts crawling into the back. And when he lays down, he starts like uh, stretching out all <laughs> the muscles on his face. Okay. Uh, back in the museum, these two guards on the first floor are going to walk up the stairs and they are looking at this area around here. The cleaners um, are finishing up cleaning these till areas and cleaning up all this dirt. Destry, what would you like to do? Okay. I'm in there, so yep. I'm going to sneak over and open the next door and close it. Okay. You're good. You look to your left and to your right. There are no guards in this long hallway. It's weird. There should be more guards here. There were a lot more this morning. It's late. There's probably less guards on duty, or they're down in the guard room. I'm gonna go okay. over to the secret door over here. Okay. You pass by those exhibits that have the really nice pickaxe, the really nice dagger, and the yep. nice medium-sized stones. Yep. Okay. Because priority is getting this, and then anything I can grab on the way out. Okay. So I'm going to open the door after lining my hand with more of the powder. Okay. Close it you behind notice, me. You notice that that powder stays active, meaning these secret doors do not have alarms on them. Perfect. Okay. It's still your turn. What do you want to do? Uh, I'm going to go and slowly just open the door enough to peek inside. You peek inside the Merkmeyer room, and you can tell that there was definitely a party here. Uh, there's a little stage uh, set up uh, where the band was, uh, uh, and you notice that there are a bunch of uh, uh, empty liquor bottles on that band stage. You notice that there are cups and plates strewn about, uh, confetti and streamers everywhere, uh, and that the Merkmeyer stone has been left uncovered, and it is uh, uh, its same greenish-yellow color, and there are two guards in this room stationed on either side of the door. The real door to enter this room, not the secret door that you're at. Okay. Uh, I'm going to mentally communicate with my raven. Goes, and the say, master sneaks, the master thieves. The master is a master thief. I'm going to mentally strangle him and say... <laughs> he goes, harder, harder! Tell them now. Uh, Blinken, you and the sad guy see this raven uh, stop like moving around. It goes completely stiff. Its head points directly straight up. Its beak opens, and a long, spiked tongue comes out, and it goes... What the... No, I said, I the... said tell them, don't do your tongue thing. I, I, can, I can feel what you're thinking. You're not telling them. <laughs> Words. Master, do you think you... I could put it through one ear and have it come out the other? <laughs> I will put my hand through one ear and out the other if you don't tell them. All right, your imp always responds well to threats. So he says, Master Deftry says it is time for the plan to commence. Oh, and the, the, you know, the coffee. Oh, finally. Okay. So <laughs> I look at the, the sad guy and be like, all right, time to, you know, do something. And then I, I signal... Uh, this or uh, fucking the other goons, and uh, be like, oh, okay. So tell me in order what's happening here. The orange token, uh, right here, is the explosives cart. I'm gonna change the color of this one by Spaz to a comforting blue since it's full of comfortable trash and clothes. What okay. do y'all want to happen right now? Okay, so assuming, um, you know, the broken cart is this big token, or? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Fuel's token is his broken cart. Okay, gotcha. So, I would be, like, thinking, um, 
that the um you yeah, know right when i say now the the explosive um cart would drive into heels card our cart it'll okay. be like that and then yeah. um you know hopefully that would trigger the explosion i'm just gonna wait and see i'm gonna say that this noble's cart which has the smoke powder in it, and then his cart, which has the alchemist fire in it. The crash, uh, he manages to get it up to speed. Uh, he sets it on a course for the thing, and he quickly kicks away the hitch that has the horses uh, attached to the cart. And the horses, as soon as they recognize they're free, they veer off to the left, and that explosive cart continues straight for Hule's cart. It has a little lantern on it, like for light. Uh, it's because it's a fancy noble cart, so it has yeah. all, the, all the fancy stuff. And uh, as he jumps out, he takes the hilt of his dagger and he breaks the glass that's on that lantern so the flames explode. And he himself jumps out. He's going to go to a normal size now. And that cart rams into Hule's cart, and we are going to roll a d20 if it is uh... higher than a... 12 it will explode i will be right back yep okay oh hey there you go all right so it takes it takes a little bit like it hits the cart and they crash together and you hear the sound and you hear some people go what and then a few seconds later you see a spark flame and it explodes with that 13, though, you notice that the windows on the second floor, the glass and the small bits of mortar that were holding the glass have appeared to crack, and some of those small windows have broken, but a big hole has not opened up like you hoped it would. But the area has been significantly damaged. Okay, so I'm going to look at the, uh, you know, whatever. Back. Basically, I'm going to tell the, the bird, tell your master if you can, I don't know how you work, but tell him that there might be a problem with the wall. There's a small crack. I don't know if he could think of something, you know, kind of relay that message. All right. Uh, Destry, roll an insight check real quick. Oh, fuck, he left. I'll, we'll do that when he gets back. Okay. Uh, Blinken, um, I guess there's more time for you to do an action. Is there anything that you would like to do? You could either help uh, um, weaken that area, go into the museum, or get staged for the next part of the plan, whatever you want to do. Maybe what I could do is, like, is there maybe a... Um, a uh, sort of street lantern thing that I could grab and possibly throw it towards the window, like, you know, to make it hopefully explode a little more um, and a little bit of more, like, hole in it. Because I, I don't think I could do anything specifically. I don't want to go in there yet unless we got more people. You have one of the bottles of Alchemist Fire that Galanis gave you. You put one in Hule's cart, and you kept one for yourself. Oh, I kept or one for, for the myself. other, yeah, yeah. for the for the goon to shoot uh, shoot with his bow and arrow. Okay, well, do I trust it? <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to say, look, I'm going to do something. Are, are, are you paying attention to me, Sad One? Whatever his name is. I don't know if he gave me his name. <laughs> but I said, no. number two. Sad Goon. Okay, so Sad Goon, listen to me. I'm going to throw this bottle here, and I hold out this Alchemist Fire. Because you see that wow. there's nothing, no, you know, there's no, not a huge hole there. So I'm, I'm going to throw this towards that wall, and you're going to shoot it right when it gets to that wall. Understand? And he goes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man, I get it. I got you. We're all yeah. the same wavelength here. Remember, if this works, happened, maybe I'll tell you. Stuff. I'll tell you where exactly this <laughs> this coffee uh, place is. Maybe we'll get some, and then I'll throw the alchemist fire there. 
Okay, and Spaz, you said, or not Spaz, Gaz, you said that Chaz. you were casting Chaz. Sorry, man. No uh, worries. You said, you said that you were adding uh, guidance to that attack. I will give him guidance in the form of, you got this, man. The after party for this is going to be great. I'll introduce you to a better band, better drinks, <laughs> better uh, party accessories. Uh, no one's better than the Doom Raiders. If y'all haven't yeah. heard them, maybe I could play you a song later. I've been practicing guitar, he says, as he's uh, uh, stringing up this arrow. All right, he's ready to go. As soon as you throw it, he'll take a shot. All right. Hey, Tetrin, now, let's go. And I throw it towards the wall. Okay. Uh, you see him track it. Uh, he's used a bow before, but he is a common thug, so his dex is plus zero. So he's going to make an attack roll. He needs to get a 12 to hit. Okay. Oof. All right. How much does your guidance add? D4. D4, yeah. Well, let's not forget, Schizo needs to make an attack action throwing the Alchemist's fire. No, he got the goon to shoot it. Yeah, but he's still throwing it at the wagon, isn't he? Wagon's already exploded. It hasn't destroyed the wall. It's damaged it, but not destroyed yeah. it. He's yeah, throwing they already... the second one to try and blast it. Yeah, they already oh. rammed the carts together. It made a big explosion. It, it put a bunch of cracks in the wall. It weakened the wall a lot, but it didn't destroy the wall. So now can I can I make it can can I make it so that like when I throw it and I see him totally going to whiff that I will shoot the arrow? No, because then you'd be throwing it and shooting it in the same turn. Oh fuck! All right. So as you throw it and he misses, the arrow planks into the wall. But that alchemist fire, it breaks on the side of the wall, and it covers the wall with alchemist fire. But it is not lit. All right, well, good try. Um, you know. Just, oh, oh, man. Oh, man, I fucked it all up. Oh, that's man. all right. We'll get oh. some coffee at some point. I look around for a lantern. Um, I, would I would assume there's, like, street lanterns around here. Yeah, there's street lanterns, uh, drip globes. Uh, you know that if you shoot uh, either of those things, they will explode. Okay, and then I'll be like, how confident is your throwing? <laughs> or, I mean, I guess if you throw the lantern at the wall, it would light the alchemist fire itself. Yeah, I think that would be, because if, if there's alchemist fire, like, you know, whatever, all over the... Thing, I would assume that it would explode, so I think that's what I would do. Okay. So I would like grab a lantern and just kind of toss it on the wall, and I'll, I'll roll to um, throw it. Yeah, roll a dex attack. Got to get a 10. Do I trust this? Okay, fine. I'll do it. This he looks like he doesn't even trust himself to do it. Okay, buddy. I'll, I'll, I'll All right, give you, you some bump tips. away from sharp objects and bathtubs. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Eleven. Eleven. So you throw it, and it looks for a moment like you didn't arc it right, and it's not going to make it all all the way to the wall, but it just does, and it hits the wall. It clangs. The glass breaks. The flame catches. And the alchemist fire uh, takes hold, uh, and it goes boom. And all of those little bits of glass blow out, and a small hole appears in the wall. It is about uh, three feet high, three feet wide, and it has a bunch of cracks around it, so the rest of the wall is weak, too. Okay, uh, really quick. Uh, Chaz, uh, what, what did you want to do? I mean, it's time to head up on the cart here, and uh, I'm just going to sort of like slowly start to wind up the cart to try and time it to give him a little bit of time to run up to the window so we're not like yes. parked in front of the hole waiting. 
Yeah, you do notice uh, there's one small uh, hick in your plan. Um, mm. Kuehl's cart is on fire, and that is directly below the three by three hole. So if you wanted to get that part of blankets like directly under the hole, you'd have to move, move Kuehl's cart, or Destry is going to have to jump at an angle to hit the cart with all the clothes. I believe in him. I'm going <laughs> to sort of try and get uh, someone who's not currently high in the back of the cart to do this <laughs> and try to prepare to assist with a guidance for when he makes the jump. Okay. Um, <laughs> you could have uh, the orange goon who was driving the other cart uh, drive this one, and you could stand on top of the cart so you could cast uh, guidance whenever you see Destry. You'll have to wait Sorry, for Sorry, guidance to jump. is touch. No. Nope. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, well. Guidance is touch. I choose to believe in him. <laughs> I choose to believe in him. There you go. You're a cleric, right? You have healing spells. I'm sure he'll be I fine. I have some heals. He'll be fine. Okay. Uh, Inchi, uh, you can tell that the plan has been set off. Uh, what would you like to do? Uh, you can tell through your magic that Destry is still invisible. What would you like to do? Um, am I closer to where the hole is in the wall or to the nearest manhole cover? You are closer to the hole in the wall. The manhole cover, okay. you'd have to like uh, run like a uh, 60 feet and get off this courtyard and find a street and then find a manhole cover. All right. Am I close enough to the hole in the wall where I can get there in one action if need be? Yeah, we're, we'll do turns if combat starts. Uh, it's kind of free floating right now. So yeah, well, I'll say that you, you can get over there. Okay. Well, I just say that because I'm going to stay where I am for now. And I'm just ready to move to either the entrance or to the hole in the wall where I'm most needed. Actually, but otherwise, then she would just stay there. Yeah, you know what? Everybody go ahead and roll initiative. Oh, no. Oh, what have I done? So, on a side note, would it be nicer for you guys if I chose the easier to pronounce name? Uh, Will that no, make I'm things fine. easier for you guys? No, we just need to write it out so we can actually look at it. Yeah, I can't remember anyone's name to begin with, so that's fine with me. There, that should be easier for you. All right, there we go. One second, guys. I'm doing a, a quick little drawing that'll hopefully tell everyone how to do this. A second. Okay. Hey, is Inchi's turn done? I'm going to charge my headphones real quick. Yeah. Okay. And Al, before you ask, yes, I'm doing the exact same thing I just did to you. Eh? Perfect. Oh, what? The thing to change the yep. auto advantage thing off? Yes. Now, that being said, I should definitely be driving this, because I haven't been impressed with these goons, and I do not trust them with this wagon at this point. Uh, that is completely fair. I've got guidance, I've got a deck score, and I have a proficiency. 
And I would like to not roll the cart on myself. That would be kind of bad. Okay. All right. We got everybody in initiative order. We're going to start at the top with Destry. Destry, you hear a soft boom. And then you hear in your head, Master, Master, we have started our arson of the museum. Get out before we blow it all up. <laughs> Destry, you see those two guards in the room go, Oi, oi, the fuck is that? What the fuck was that? You go check on it. No, you go check on it. No, you go check on it. Uh, and they argue back and forth for a little bit, and then one of them leaves the room, and you can hear him yell at the other go one in the Allosaurus exhibit saying, what the fuck? What in the hell was that? Let's go. Let's go <laughs> investigate that. Hey, you two, get up here. And then those two guards that were downstairs race up here. And all four of them are going to head over to the Unearthed Cafe to investigate the source of this noise. Oh, wait, no, we're in turn order, so they should probably all be about right here. They're making their way to the cafe. All right. I'm going to uh, make sure I left that back door open. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to... I'm assuming uh, Buddy Boy here is staring out the door. Yeah, yeah, this this door has been left open, uh, okay. and he's, like, looking through it like, what the fuck? I'm going to open the door and make my way to the crystal. All right. Uh, make sure that you're maintaining your movement speed. That, that would be 5, 10, and 15, because I can only move half movement without uh, uh, losing my uh, spell. Really? Uh, if you're moving stealthily, you can only do half movement before you start uh, getting disadvantage. Um, okay. Uh, would you like to perform an action this turn? Um, no, I'm still invisible, and I'm just gonna, like, avoid... Fucking up at this point. <clears throat> okay. The staff are going to roll their initiative too. 19. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm sorry, Destry. What did you say your action was going to be? Brax? Hello? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Brax, what did you say your action was going to be? To not cause a scene. Okay. Do not Going to the top up. of the initiative order, it is Blinken's turn. Blinken, what are you doing? Uh, after you that exploded, um, yeah, I, I see that, you know, the cart's been moved up, so I'm going to run towards the cart and probably um, jump in, in, in the back, you know, kind of like a far corner so that I don't get hit if he jumps on the center of the, the cart. Okay. I just go like, you know, there. And then obviously okay. out in the cart. Okay. And then um, I guess for, um, just in case, I'm going to do uh, like a, Ready action, just in case, like, if there's a guard coming here, and if the, if it looks like they're getting close to us, um, I'll just kind of shoot a warning shot, you know, just to see if I could draw them away. Who are you trying to draw away? 
if there's a guard coming out towards our cart, right? So I'm just gonna, okay. you know, I'm gonna hold my action to do like a warning shot. Okay. And, you know what uh, I mean? Like if there's a guard coming out from the front and they're just coming to the side, see you know, what's what all the commotion's yeah. about. Yeah. Okay, I got you. I got you. All right. <clears throat> that is Blinken's turn. It is now the staff's turn. The guards are going to walk five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 25. So the, some of the guards have just entered the unearthed cafe. One is still outside the unearthed cafe. Uh, and you notice, well, actually, no one's there to notice. Okay. Uh, Blinken, you can hear from above you through that three by three hole. Uh, uh, hole. Uh, you can hear some something that sounds like guards going, Oi, oi, look, there's a hole in that wall. And that's coming from above you, Blinken. Okay. The cleaning staff uh, kind of look around. Uh, well, actually, y'all wouldn't know what they're doing. The cleaning staff do stuff. All right. I got them moved around. Next, it is going to be Shaz's turn. All right. Oh. Do we want to fake being bystanders and uh, offer to help getting the guard out of the way to prevent the fire from the building? I mean, I could help out. We tend to be concerned citizens trying to save the building. Yeah, I could do that. I could do that. All right, so I guess I'm going to shout out towards the uh, hole in the wall. Oh, there's been a terrible accident. There's a fire. You, in the building, go fetch some buckets of water before it spreads. We'll get the cart out of the way. Or we'll clear the wreckage. Okay, you can roll a performance check. Can I make it a deception? Yes, you can. Just uh, I'm trying to find settings here. Okay. It does not want to let me add that guidance to it. Now, is an ability check the same as a skill check, or is that something different? I'm not super yeah. familiar with the terminology. Um, so for this ability check, or the deception is a skill, so you would roll a d20. If you're proficient, you would add your proficiency bonus, and then you would add your charisma modifier. While the roll's doing it, I'm just wondering if the guidance would proc on this. Yes, yes, it would. Okay. So then that's going to be that, and that on top of it. So a 16, and you hear, you hear, fire, fire, oh no, go wake up the other guards. Get them to get some water and get outside. Okay, so they believe that. Uh, Shaz, that is your turn. Inchi, your turn. Okay, so are the guards now coming out of the front entrance to get water? Uh, you can't see inside, so you don't actually know. Uh, you heard uh, that conversation, so you know eventually that will happen. But the museum's a big place. It's going to take them a couple turns to run through it all. Sure. Okay. So I can't like visibly see in the entrance, see what's going on. The doors are closed or something, so I can't like look in. Yep. Yep. And it's just stone walls, no windows on the outside. Okay. <clears throat> uh, since I all the is, 
I got to use the bathroom again. It happens when I drink. Sure, sure. I believe that happens to everybody when they drink. <laughs> Fair point. So I'm thinking about just doing a ding dong ditch on these guys to get some attention. Does that fuck things up? We most definitely could do the ding dong ditch. Uh, I oh, when as they as run I'm... outside with the freaking water, you start shit with them so they get distracted. Exactly. I'm just trying to give Destry the opportunity to book it for that hole. Well, here's the thing. Because if I help out, we try and get the cart pushed out of the way. And when the guards <laughs> run out. Knightly shows up at the uh, door, jumps out into the cart with the goons, rides off, and then we go, oh no, the fire's still spreading. I'm going to go get more help as a concerned citizen. Or as they ride by, we try and hop on the cart and away we go. Hmm. I mean... I don't know. Yeah, yeah, uh... The explosion was already pretty loud. I feel like if there is help coming there, it's going to be coming. So we could see more foot traffic. I don't know if he would have been planned for that. And mostly bullshitting and sending other people away to go get like firefighters and water and stuff. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I guess I could play that, but I think I'd have to wait for them to come out then. I mean, at the very least. As far as I know, the only kitchen in that building just exploded, so it's mm -hmm. going to be not the easiest. So wherever the guards are, they're going to have to get up, run to the nearest water source, get the water, run out, open the door. So at least that buys us a couple more turns rather than them just beelining it to the door. Sure. Um... Okay, I'm back. Inchi, what did you want to do? Um, you know what? Fully expecting the alarms to go off. I think I'm going to go up to the front entrance just to open the door, peek in, see what uh, what I can do right off if I can't do anything. Just peek in real quick. So you're just going to push the door open? Yes. Okay, you push the door open and you hear do. Do, do. You peek in and you look out at the lobby. Uh, you notice there's the reception desk, the two uh, statues of human women, the big lobby with the tills in the back and the staircase. You don't see anything happening in here at first. And then you hear something, uh, some people shouting coming from the staircase going, Fire! Fire! Wake up, you drunk bastards! Wake up! Hmm. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to go to this office right here. Uh, I'm going to hope there's another alarm here, and I'm just going to open this office door, too, and just try to set off as many alarms as I can on the first floor. Okay. And she, when you take a step inside the museum... You feel the little uh, pad that's in front of the door, the little carpeted area. You feel it sink down a little bit, and you have this sinking feeling in your stomach that you have set off a trap. Oh, fuck. You hear a sound above you of a rope uh, detaching from a mechanism, and you see a weighted net drops from a secret compartment into the ce ceiling, and it's going to drop directly on top of you. All right, can I try to uh, move to back, uh, back out to the door? Is that a roll or anything I can try? You can make a dexterity saving throw. You need a uh, 12. E... Oh, got the 12. Uh, and then Ty right. goes to the defender. Uh, so you're diving out of the way. Which way do you want to dive? Back out yeah. through the door, because screw that shit. 
Okay. You jump back out through the door. Yep. The net uh, falls to the floor. Uh, it doesn't capture anything, and it just sits there on the floor. Uh, you are now safe to walk through that area, should you choose to do so. Uh, so up about 10 feet of movement so far. Okay. Uh, I've already triggered the alarm. That was my main purpose of this. Plus, I'm thinking I'm going to keep the door open to keep peering inside. So I think I'll just end my turn here. Okay. Next up is Destry. <laughs> Okie doke. So, with all that commotion going on, I'm going to... 5, 10... Going to rub my hand in the silica. Mm hmm Uh, one second, I just need to double check some notes. Uh. Fuck it, we're balling. Alright, I'm going to, uh, grasp it firmly. Yeah, buddy, you do that. Mm. So yeah, I, gra I grab the stone. You grasp the stone firmly <laughs> in your uh, silica up hands, and what are you doing? Are you pushing it off the pedestal, picking it up? What's up? I am waiting to see if I hear another alarm. So just putting your hands on it? No. Perfect. I'm going to ready in action. Uh... And end my turn. What's the action that you're readying? On my next turn, I'm going to pull the stone, and mm -hmm. I'm going to, because I I'm I'm covered up, right? I'm uh, like my face is covered. I got dark clothing on. I'm not like wearing the same shit as prior. Yep. I'm going to grab that stone with all my might, and I'm going to fucking run. Okay. Like, I'm uh, going to be, like, an athletic kid running out of a church, running. Okay. Uh, you are going to have to make a strength check. You're going to have to get above a 14 to be able to pick this up and move with it. Okay? All right. All right. It is heavy. Also, roll a d12. Okay, so what do you want first, strength or the d12? Uh, you'll be doing the strength when you actually pick it up later. Okay, so uh, right I'll now, the d12. just do the d12. You put your hands on the stone, and earlier today when you touched it, it was cool to the touch, like any kind of gemstone. But now it feels a little bit warm. You put your hands on it, and you feel that you have some increased energy. Your walking speed increases by five feet. Well, that's a coincidence. Lincoln, it is your turn. What would you like to do? Hearing that, you know, he, he wants to be concerned citizens, I'm gonna hop off the cart and move up and, like, look at the, 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 the you know, burning corpse cart of... Uh, Huey's thing here. Shield's uh, cart that he yeah. has 125 gold pieces <laughs> yeah. for. Yeah, I'm like, what happened here? And I'm gonna, like, you know, see if there's any, like, boards and stuff that's not on fire and kind of pick off the wreckage, kind of act like a citizen. Mm -hmm. Like you're picking through it? Yeah, just kind of, like, you know, see if I could douse the flame, so to speak, you know, kind of stop it from spreading while, you know, hopefully guards will show up. Yeah, hopefully. Um, okay.
Okay, I'm gonna let you uh, get the same performance check as your cleric uh, because you just rolled one as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, are you holding? Uh, so you're dropping the holding your uh, bow and arrow function, and you're gonna go to uh, uh, this performance check, right? That's yeah, the plan? that's that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Next up is the staff. So you hear through that hole in the wall, uh, the guards run, uh, and you hear them shout, Hey, hey, cleaning wizard, do you know any water spells, any mending spells, anything like that? And the guy goes, No, I just have counter spell prepared for tonight. And they go, Fuck. All right, and they are going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. All right, and this cleaning staff is going to get out of their way, make some space there. Destry, the guard in your room, walks uh, on the other side of the door, and he goes, Oi, oi, what's the report here? Uh, and they're shouting at each other back and forth. And then Inchi, peeking through the door, you can see... Uh, And she, you can see coming out of the guards' room is that curator from earlier today. She steps out of that room and she goes, what in the nine hells is going on in this museum? Why are half of my guards asleep at the break table? You snuck in to our wine supply and you gorged yourselves upon it. All of you will be reported to uh, the nobles that hired you. Disgraceful behavior, each and every one of you. And you see two, three guards drunkenly step out of that room with her. And she goes, thank the heavens and all the gods that I was here to clean up after your mess. Uh, and she, you saw that. That is all the staff. Uh, Shaz, it is your turn. What would you like to do? All right. So. First off, are any of the pedestrians reacting to this, or is everybody just sort of doing the deer in the headlights routine on the side here? Uh, um, what do you mean by pedestrians? Like citizens? Like just any other by? citizens out on the street? Uh, nope. Uh, this area is kind of uh, secluded from the city. It's like this. It's in this very nice area that doesn't have a lot of nightlife activity, and it's this big. Uh, University yeah, grounds, so we're in a quiet so you know, we're in a quiet neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess we're gonna try and uh, get the freaking guard out of here. If anyone wants to assist me here, we're gonna oh, just sort of. Hey. Y'all can also see uh, sticking his head through that three by three hole is the guard, and he's looking down at y'all. Going, oi, what the hell happened? So there is one guard watching y'all. There's been an accident and a fire. We're going to try and get the wreckage away from the building and put it out. Get it away from the building. Do you know how much smoke damage costs to repair? No, but I can guess. <laughs> okay, so you're trying to push the burning cart away? Or at least whatever we can, just to try and, like, shimmy the wreckage away from the hole. Or, okay. like... Okay, yeah, yeah. So you start, like, grabbing things and pushing them out. You wrap cloth around your hands to protect you from the burning. And you yeah, push it out. there's, like, a board yeah. that was blasted off, trying to use that as, like, an improvised yeah. crowbar to try and, like... Yeah, yeah. You you uh, manage to get it moving a little bit, and then all three of your goons come to help, especially the one that's high. He's like, oh, oh, it's go time. Okay, and he comes over, and he just starts grabbing shit and throwing it out of the way. He doesn't care if it's burning or not. He's just grabbing it and throwing it, grabbing it and throwing it. 
Why uh, is so guidance that, on him and see if he's got some of that cocaine strength to help <laughs> us out? He goes, he goes even I faster, in even him. harder. He gets all the debris out of the way, and then he picks up the side of the cart with the broken wheel, and he like kind of manages to be his own little wheel, and he pushes it forward five feet, giving just barely enough room for the other cart to get in here. And I'll say that Blinken helped out with that as well. Yeah, I was right. there. Or to shout out, like, Oi, bring the other cart with the blankets. We'll throw them on to smother the flames. I'm just gonna, like, whisper like, to whoever's next to me with the goons. Not yeah, really. Like, Grab a couple, but don't go fast. <laughs> <laughs> that guard above you goes, Oh, that's real convenient. You had a bunch of blankets there. Just nearby, hey, man. The guards are looking out for us. Gods be praised! And that's my turn. <laughs> Alright. Inchi, you can tell that uh, Blinken, or that uh, Destry is still invisible. You just saw three guards come out of that room, along with the curator, Alda Arkin. Mm. Uh, I think it waved to get their attention and say, uh, Hey, lady, you three. I stole your plants. Because your agent plants, fuck you. And I'm going to run <laughs> off in this direction, away from the hole, but just uh, through this side, trying to taunt them into chasing me. Okay. Uh, as you round this corner, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, um, you could dash if you want. Do you want to dash? Uh, I'm, let me, I want to just. Did it look like I riled them up, or do do they want to chase me? Um, uh, Alda Arkham would have screamed, "Get that goblin!" Well, then, yeah, I'm dashing, and I'm just gonna try to just book it in the opposite direction of where everyone is active over here. All right, so you do that. Uh, you're gonna get to about right here, and do you recall uh, dipping around this corner of the building? This is the same thing that Alda Arkin did when she left at midnight. Instead of uh, walking towards the streets of Waterdeep and heading off towards her home, she walked sure. close to the building and then just around the same corner. You don't know what she did after that. Uh, and she does not care. He's booking it. Okay. Um, uh. Destry, it is your turn. Cool. Uh, I follow through with the plan of uh, grab it and fucking run. Alright, make your strength check. You have to get, what did I say, 14? Yeah, 14. You said that I had to roll higher than a 5. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, it's 17. There we fucking go, buddy. There we fucking go. So, you pick it up, and as soon as you pick it up, you notice the pedestal it was on slides upward a little bit as if the stone was weighing something down. And when that happens, you hear and the doors that were right here close. Uh, Inchi, you notice Which as door? you're rounding these doors right here okay. in the room you're in. Yep. Inchi, you noticed that as you were running around this corner, uh, you hear do 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 do, and the doors to the museum close and lock. Uh -oh. That was the last thing you saw before you rounded the corner. Destry, you are holding this approximately one hundred pound stone in your hands. You can only move half of your movement speed while you're holding on to this. What would you like to do? And you said I got plus uh five feet. Yes. Well, that was okay. last turn. Roll a d twelve. Oh. oh, I don't like that you're making me roll so much. Ten. Ten. As the stone shifts in your weight, it's, it's weird. It feels like it wobbles back and forth, as if it's filled with warm liquid inside. Your thought processes are sluggish, as if you just awoke from terrible nightmares. You have disadvantage on intelligence checks and intelligence saving throws. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to now very carefully... I haven't broken stealth from how it feels, right? Um, 
yeah, you picked up something. Like, that breaks invisibility in Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, but in Baldur's Gate 3, the Berserker Barbarian is actually viable. Or is there now an invisible person and a floating egg? What is the invisible say again? Well, either way. Target that attacks or cast a spell. I'm going to say picking this thing up is like an action. And that would break your invisibility. Because it's just so monumental and so heavy. All right. All well, right. So you are visible in your all black. Black on black on black. On yep. black, that is my crook look. Okay, what would you like to do? Well, I'm going to get into this passageway. Uh, was that 15 feet? Uh, that's 15 feet. All right, that is where you are this turn. All right, and, and you uh, hear uh, from the other side of this door. Oi, hey. Hey, why can't I get in here? Hey, the silica's not working. Oh. Oh, no. The arcane lock has been activated. All right. Next up, it's Blinken. Um, oh, I'm just... Hey, Blinken. I'm just gonna, like, um, you know, continue on, like, clearing out, trying to clear out the wreck wreckage, but kind of slowly, you know, like, oh, my God, what am I gonna do with a fire? I'm just gonna look around, like, look for water, and then I'll be like, ugh, and then, like, you know, um, try not to, again, like, get burned by picking up the wood that's already been charred and moving it out of the way and shit. Okay. All right. Um, the staff is going to go next, and you hear more shouting, Destry, and Blinken, and Shaz, and the goons. You all hear someone say, the arcane lock has been activated. The arcane lock has been activated. Someone stealing the Merkmire stone. And you hear the guard above you go, what? What? And then look down at y'all, and he's going to make an intelligence check. <laughs> if he gets above a 14... He is going to piece together that y'all are involved in some kind of distraction. Okay. And he failed. He, that, points, right? he points one finger at all of you and he goes, Thieves! Thieves! Get them! Uh, y'all all, Destry, uh, you would have told this to everybody, but all the Arkans said that if uh, that pedestal was activated, that it sent an alarm to the city watch as well. I don't remember that being said, but okay, if I knew that, I said it. All right. Uh, given that, Blinken, since you didn't do much on your turn, would you like to do something now? Um, well, if that's the case, let me see. The, the guard just pointed his finger at you and said, Thieves! I'll be like, I don't know what you're talking about, and I'm going to cast um, bonus action and snaring strike on myself so that, like, Obviously, um, it'll, uh, here, I'll show you. You're going to cast this on yourself? Yeah, it's, it's a self spell. So that next attack, I would, you know, okay. Okay. Um, yeah. get that. Okay. That was your bonus action. You still have an action left. And then I'll be like, uh. I don't know what you're talking about, and I'm just using my action to continue clearing out <laughs> the rubble. Just act like okay. I don't know. Okay. Along with the cokehead's help, you're able to push it even further away. And you can move the cart up to right beneath the hole. Okay. Staff's turn. Uh, one guard is yelling thieves at you. 
the other mm-hmm. ones are going what what and they start dashing down the stairs so they are going to get to the bottom of the stairs this one guard is going to keep hitting the wall or the door to try to get in and he says uh, the door is locked the door is locked we need to get in some other way uh, and he is going to walk over here to this vent and he is going to try and pry it off He pries off the vent, and he is going to spend the rest of his turn crawling through it. Destry, you can hear someone crawling around in this vent right here. This vent that you uh, noticed earlier today. Cool. I'm going to, uh... It's my turn, you said? Nope. No. I was just letting you know. Okay. That's the staff's turn. Uh, The three guards down here by Alda are going to dash towards the main door because they saw Inchi there. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So they just about make it to the door. Alda Arkin is doing something that none of you can see. All right, Shaz, it is your turn. All right. Go. Oh. Is anyone good in a fist fight and or wants to go up? The cokehead raises his hand and the <laughs> bad guy also raises his hand. And All right. the other guy. You have three goons. Okay, who wants to go in the building? Someone's going in the hole. Uh, All three of them are willing to do it because you're paying them, so you get to pick which one. All right. Coke man, he's got that roid strength. I'm going to use the <laughs> racial touch ability, and I'm teleporting him 30 feet up and through the hole next to the guard upstairs. <laughs> Godspeed. Uh, <laughs> so you touch him, and he just like disappears in a wave of magic, and then you hear a pop as he pushes the air away uh, where he reappears. Uh, that is the sound effect of someone teleporting. That it sounds Uh-oh. very uh, gentle. And then he's right next to this guy, and he goes, "What's up, bro? What's up, man?" And then he just starts hitting him in the face. Uh-huh. And yeah. they're really wild swinging punches, so he doesn't even get one off on the guy. But that guard is distracted. All right, next up, it is Inchi's turn. Inchi, what would you like to do? Okay, you said that the front door is locked up behind me, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, seeing that his ding-dong ditch plan isn't quite going to work as he expected, uh, and not knowing how helpful he's going to be on this side, I'm going to look around this side of the and see where the curator could have gone, because one moment she was outside, next she was in, and, and she's just kind of wondering if there's a, a entrance that they may have missed before. Roll a perception check. All right, with that, you can't see any door or anything, but you do see a footpath, this area of dirt uh, where there used to be grass, but people walking on it have worn it down. There's a little footpath right here that leads towards some shrubs and some trees that are growing really, really close to the wall. Hmm. And she wants to kind of just part the part the trees, part the shrubbery, and just kind of like knock on the wall, see what we can find. All right, you push those trees and shrubs aside, and you look at where that dirt path uh, ends, and it seems to go underneath some stones that look like they're a part of the wall. You think that maybe there is a secret door here. You can mm. roll a strength check to try to push it open, 
or you can roll another perception check to see if there's some kind of mechanism to open it. Hmm. I think the smart thing would to perceive it. Yeah, I'll do perception. Yeah, give me another perception check. Uh, nope, six. Uh, with that, it just like you can kind of see that there's a rectangle here, like the stones kind of line up to make a perfect rectangle. Uh, so you can see the outline of a door, but you do not know how to open it. Okay. Uh, could I push on it this time, or my turn ending it? That is your turn, unless you can do okay. two actions. So All I right, can we push on it? Oh, no. Okay, never mind. No. Okay. So we are going yeah, to yeah. Destry. Destry, you hear that there is a guard scrambling around in the vent right next to you. What would you like to do? Uh, five, ten, five, ten. Close the door with my foot. Very, uh, like try to be quiet about it. Okay. Uh, I will say that you get to do that because he's not looking at you yet. He's in a dark vent, uh, and making a lot of his own noise. Uh, you still can perform an action if you'd like to. Uh, do you want me to roll that d12? Yes, please. Uh, that effect changes, and you go back to having an additional five feet of movement. Perfect. I'm going to slide out this door, because I did leave it open. So that was, what, 5, 10, 15, 20? And I'm going to slide mm -hmm. the door closed again. Okay. You are in the underground... Uh, or you are in the archaeological display exhibit. And then I'm going to use my action to dash. 5, 10, 15, 20. 20. And okay. I'm just hoping no one noticed. Okay. Next up is Blinken. Blinken, uh, your <laughs> new cleric friend just transported one of your goons up into the upper levels to fight that guard. What did you want to do? Um, I think I'm going to post myself next to the cart, and what I'll do is look south and kind of ready in action to attack now since, uh, you know, it, like I, I'll pull out my bow, and then, you know, obviously the next strength, or the next uh, attack will be a staring strike. So if a card appears around the corner coming towards us, I'll shoot whatever comes first. Okay. Uh, you also notice that if you adjust your angle, you could probably shoot that guard through the hole above you, if you wanted to. Uh, no, I'll, I'll I'll leave it to him because I, I, my focus is trying to stop people from coming towards this. If I see them here, so I'm good. Okay, so next it is the staff's turn. The cleaning staff remains in place. Uh, the guards told them to stand there uh, with their hands on their head and not do anything. Uh, the guards that were on the upper floor uh, are now on the bottom floor, and they say, Miss Arkin, Miss Arkin, the Merkmeyer stone, it's being stolen. The arcane, uh, the arcane locks were set off. And Alda Arkin, uh, Turns around. Actually, none of you can see this, so you just hear some shouting. You hear men shouting, and then you hear a woman shouting, then you hear men shouting, then you hear a woman shouting. Uh, her group of guards reaches the front door. Uh, she uses her key to unlock that front door, so the guards step outside and then run off to this corner. That is their movement speed. Alda Arkin remains inside. Uh, right here, and then these guards uh, go back upstairs, and they're going to try to break down the door to get into the Merkmeyer exhibit. They are unable to break down the door this turn. Jazz, it is your turn. Okay, give me like 
30 seconds. My dad just wants something. Okay. Inchi, we can go ahead and do your turn. You hear that there are some guards coming around the corner. You are over here investigating this uh, fake door. Or this uh, secret door. Sorry? Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry, yeah, I, I gotta charge my earbuds between every turn now. It's uh, trying to die on me. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and she's just going to just try to first push this thing open because he can't see shit. Okay, roll a strength check. You need to beat a 12. 17. 17. You push All on right. the door and it slides open. You are able to sneak into a dark room and close that door behind you. You are now in the basement of the El Torchal Villa Museum. This is uh, your first time in here. Let me drag you over to it. Oh, no. All right. So you are in the basement. Boxes and crates are piled here in groups. Enormous warehouse doors take up much of the basement's northern wall. This area okay. is uh, frequently visited. Uh, there's some small lamplight uh, over in a corner here uh, next to some crates uh, that were recently opened. Uh, and there is a purple cloth, a distinctive purple cloth inside this uh, crate. You recognize it as the same purple as the bandanas that the members of the Xanathar Guild wear. Mm. Not wanting uh, another problem to occur like before, and she's going to look around for traps. Could I perhaps roll like a perception for that? Um... You know that you are dealing with magical alarms, so Arcana would probably be better. Arcana. But you can roll a perception check on the room if you wish. Son of a bitch. Uh, yeah, five. With a five, you do not feel any magical energy in this room. Okay. Uh, and she's just going to go over to that crate and look and try to see what's, uh, what that purple thing is. All right, you start looking at the crate, and the crate is a normal-looking box, but on the inside it is lined with that purple handkerchief and a yellow drawing of eyes. There are many gold coins thrown in this box, as well as small bits of rare stones that looks like they've been chipped off bigger stones. Uh, you can also see that in this box there is a plus one short sword, a plus one spear, and a plus one set of armor. Uh, leather leather armor. Okay. Uh, and she's eyes go wide, and he says, jackpot, and starts just shoveling gold into, a, like, making a little bowl with his shirt and just trying to shovel it in. Okay, Inchi, you managed to get yourself... You know what? Inchi takes off his whole shirt and just uses it as a fucking purse. Okay. You get yourself 25 gold pieces and about 20 pounds of gems and ore. Jesus. <laughs> All right. Okay, uh, can I hold that with one hand? Yeah, you'll be able to hold all that with one hand, no problem. Okay. Uh, but... there... Go ahead, go ahead. No, what were you about to say? Uh, with my one free hand, I think I'm going to grab that sword that you mentioned as well. Okay, you grab that plus one sword, and as you pull uh, your hand out of the box, you notice that there's a, there's a bunch of other crates sitting right beside this box, and one of those boxes begins to move. It seems as if its own top opens itself, but it, it's weird. The inside of it, it, it looks like flesh, and where nails should be to hold the box together, it looks like it's teeth. 
inchy. Oh, boy. There's oh, a mimic boy. in this room. Oh, boy. Uh, that don't sound hear, good. <laughs> you hear a charm say, Beware those who steal from Xanathar. From Xanathar? Shit. Um... Yeah, and she just books it for the door, still with the gold uh, and sword and tote. Well, that's your turn. That's the end of your turn. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. Well, that's why I will do. Shaz, are you back? Yep. All right. What would you like to do? All right. Well, how many of the guards made it outside? You peek around the corner. There are three guards outside facing uh, off in the opposite direction of where you are. All right. We try another Jesus take the wheel freaking move here. Jesus take the wheel. Oh, what the hell? Hands. Well, still looking like a normal peasant. I'll just shout out to the guys, uh, the guards there. Boy, I saw a gnome-looking fella run down the road over there. That's the thief you folks are screaming about. And they go, uh, boy, thanks for the tip. And they keep running off after the guy. All right, Destry, it is your turn. Cool. Um, bang out that roll 20, or that roll uh, d12 very quickly. What's the damage? Tell me it's good. You die. Congratulations. No. Well, if we pull this off, I'm adopting Buddy as my pet cokehead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't blame you. That seems fun. Sorry, guys, my roommate wanted something. Okay, so with a four, your skin takes on a weird sheen. You gain resistance to piercing and slashing damage. Oh. But, Destry, you feel as if something inside the stone just moved. And then you feel the stone itself move. And you hear a high-pitched kick, kick, kick. It almost sounds as if it's breaking. Cool. I'm going to uh, uh, sprint 30 feet this way. Fantastic. Uh, would you like to perform an action? Oh, dashing is your action. Fantastic. Dashing? You know what? You make a very solid point. <clears throat> I'm thinking uh -huh. I might bonus action. Yeah, okay. yeah. I Hit might bonus it. action. Gonna gonna take that extra thirty feet. I think. Oh fuck! Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. And that's exactly right. what I say. Oh fuck! As I zip another thirty feet. You zip another thirty feet, and you end up right next to the fake Merkmeyer stone. And you end up to those other uh, raw ore and gem deposits. I'm going to look at the fake Meyer stone and be like, I could take you to. <laughs> Not going pick to. Them, pick them both up, move five feet a minute or five feet a turn. Yeah. Five feet a minute, yeah. Five feet every six seconds, yeah. <laughs> All right. It is the staff's turn. First, we're going to handle Cokehead McGee. He is going to attack the guard. My hero. <laughs> All right, he actually hits the guard uh, with this one. Uh, it is an unarmed strike, so that is, I believe, a D4. I gotta get him brass knuckles and let him just go to down on someone. Yes, yeah, he did one damage to the guy, but oh, wow. he has so much energy. 
he does a second attack. Damn right, all that coke. Oh. Oh, I don't okay, know why. Okay, tell the truth. Damage, he didn't hit. So he did one damage to the guard. The guard goes, what the fuck? All right. It is now the staff's turn, so the guard is now going to roll against Cokehead McGee. And he also misses, so these two are just having a little slap fight. Fucking okay, God. It's great. All right, the other guards are going to try to break down the door to the Merkmire room. They still fail. No. Uh, the main, or that guard crawling through the vent gets through the other side, crashes through, and he goes, The Merkmire stone is missing! The Merkmire stone is missing! Cleaning staff stays still. These three guards run around the edge of the building, looking for Inchi. They can't see it. Alda Arkin moves to her office. Cleaning crew stays still. Next up is Shaz. All right, I think Lincoln Park's going to have to go give him a hand upstairs. <laughs> Hell yeah, bring him over there. Lincoln Park. Not me. No, 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 no. I mean, freaking like sad boy, sad goon. emo. Oh, okay. He's more of a, a, a My Chemical Romance guy. All right. Well, then he knows how to use this. <laughs> as I hand him a dagger, and up the, through the hole he goes. <laughs> <laughs> so you can teleport him again. I've got Uber Day. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> All right, you teleport him up, and you hear that. Pss sound uh and he's up there now and he's gonna take a stab at the guard and the guard goes what the fuck oh <laughs> that's i'm sad. gonna mutter he can't do anything right he also misses uh uh and he goes no one could hate me as much as i hate myself <laughs> uh, no he should do a mcr lyric he goes uh uh Drop the dagger and lather the blood on your hands, Romeo. And he oh, takes a God. stab, and he misses. All right. Um, guys, that was your turn. Inchi, your turn. You have in one hand of 20 gold pieces and 20 pounds first worth of ore and gemstone. In your other hand, you have a plus one sword. You finally have a big dagger. Standing in front of you is a mimic with 58 health points. What do you do? Let's see. I have already used invi invisibility once. I assume that means I cannot do so again. No. So as a wizard, you have spell slots. So you have a certain number of spells you can cast per day. If you right. still have a spell slot at the spell level that invisibility is, you can cast it again. Right, okay, but I think I, I already reserved my spell slot, so I'll, I'll just stick to those. Let's see. Let's read here. You, you absolutely can cast invisibility again. Okay, because I do got two spell slots, and I've only used one level two spell spell slot. Yep. So, yep. sure. Uh, uh, and uh, I can feel that Destry is no longer invisible, right? Yes, you can feel that. All right, so I cast invisibility on myself. Oh, shit. Actually, dude, real quick, on the staff's turn, the mimic should have gone. Ah, so shit. Okay. Attack you real quick. He is going to try to bite you. Remember, if you don't consent, he can't bite you. I read this in the 2024 rulebook. He got an 18 I wish. for attack. Does that hit? I'm seeing 13. Plus 5 to his hit. Ah. Uh, armor class 10, is that it? Yep. Yeah, that hits. So he does hit you. He's going to do 1d8 plus 3 damage Oof. from the fight. Okay. Oof. Oh, so that's Jesus. 11, 11 piercing damage plus... 1d8 of acid damage. 
so I'm dead? No. I had nine hit points. You have nine hit points? So hold on. 11 plus seven, six is 17. So no, you're not dead. You're not dead, but you are unconscious. And you will start doing death saving throws. We don't know where you're at. (laughs) Meaning that every turn you are going to roll um, a saving throw. Uh, And if you get three three rolls below 10, you die. If you get three rolls above 10, you stabilize and you're kept at zero hit points. Okay. All right. Well, I guess I'm down for the guy. Do I use my turn as a as one of these uh, death saving throws? Then, yes, you do. Go ahead and roll a d twenty. Don't add anything to it. Huh? Oh, I did death save. Ugh. I mean, that's what it is. So you have one death save. Well, shit. And I did alert anyone to where I am, so I, I think this battle is my own. Yep. Shit. You don't know where you're at. Shit. Damn, that was a lot of damage. Fuck. That makes us yeah. scary. I, I feel yeah. bad. That makes her pretty bad. <laughs> Episode I one, I did bad. say you can kill Inchi, so this is on me. Yeah, I wish I had not rolled the acid damage. Too late, motherfucker! I think it's going down to the first hit anyway. Yeah, you would have. Oh, no, the first hit was eight, but still. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, the first hit was eleven. So yeah, I. Oh yeah, no, that that's yeah yeah. 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 I, okay, I don't feel bad anymore. Ah, potato, <laughs> potato. Hold on, hold on. Six. Oh no, yeah, yeah, you're good. If you like instantly die, you, you know whatever the damage is, it has to um, double the uh, health point. Yeah, if I took like eighteen damage, that would have been like death, right? That's, that's instant uh, death. Yeah. 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 Oh, so you got pretty damn close. Yeah, yeah. I, that's why I was thinking. Yeah, I just fucking died. Yeah, no, not yet. Okay, so you are bleeding out on the floor from a bite wound. Destry, your turn. Cool. Uh, I'm going to roll that d12 first. You hear someone saying, "Master." Master, the chaos is grand. The chaos is great. Come outside for the bloodbath. Go help that goblin person. Get out of my head. And I'm going to uh, make my... The goblin with the tasty hair? Yes, the goblin with the tasty hair. And uh, what's the one give? Harsh whispers in an unknown language assault your consciousness. You gain vulnerability to psychic damage and can't maintain concentration on spells. Oh, okay. Okay, what do you want to do? Uh, I can only move 15. So I'm going to... Oh, 5... 10, 15. Okay. Are you going to perform an action? Yes, I'm going to dash another 15. 5, 10, 15. And I'm just not going to draw attention to myself. You know, the boys seem to have that guard handled. Uh... And, you know, the big thing is, it seems above my pay grade. To have to deal with this, yeah. Uh, so he, he is standing directly in front of the hole. Okay, uh, yeah. As you get to this room, you notice that like this wall here is cracked and all the glass is broken. But right in front of this guard is a three by three hole. Cool. I'm going to. Uh, can I just stealth and see if I can like not draw attention to myself while he's too busy fighting off these crackheads? You used your action to dash, so no. Then I'm going to stand there quietly. Okay. Blinken, your turn. 
uh, you hear uh, Inchi's or Destry's little imp go, uh, I can no longer feel goblet man with tasty hair. Something is wrong. Something is very wrong. And it cocks its head back and that spiked tongue comes out and it goes, and it flies off. Uh, oh my shit. Um, hmm. All right, well, I'm gonna. Uh, what do I wanna do? I'll probably. Oh, I, I'm probably watching the fight going on upstairs, right? Like they're kind of back and mm -hmm. forth. So I'm gonna shoot yeah. the guard with this ensnaring strike. Okay. So that he hopefully gets restrained. Uh, so the DC is 12. Uh, it is a strength. 13 dc 13 and that is uh double checking strength yeah 13 strength um, i'm gonna go ahead and roll to attack okay his armor class is 16. shaz do you want to give guidance for this if i'm able to absolutely <laughs> he's right next to you and he's lucky because I'm out of teleports. <laughs> I'm good. All right, so let me go ahead and attack. So it's a D12 or D20 plus six. Yeah, D6. Yep, I believe in you. That's 12 to hit. 12 to hit, uh, add the D4 for guidance. Yep. Uh, there you go. 16. Oh, nice job, man. You hit him. You hit him. So go ahead and roll your damage. Nice. All right. So. Amage is. Six. All right. So it is a seven total. Seven total. And then he has this to roll guard. that um, strength save for the restraint. All right. Guard has plus one to strength. And he's got to be to 12, right? 13. Oh, 13. shit. Got it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yep. Uh, so the vines start growing over him, and he shakes it loose. Uh, but he is looking very bad off. He looks like he does not have much HP left at all. And then I'll, I'll yell out to Sad Boy saying, Remember, the coffee's on me if you get him. End my turn. Okay. It's now the staff's turn, so our two goons are going to go. Oh, shit. Oh, so the first way. One got, a, got a 14 which misses, but the second one, the sad boy with the dagger, got a nat 20. There you so go, that's my boy. D6s. He got a six and a two. So he just stabs him, like, right in the neck, and that guard goes... and starts falling over, uh, bleeding out on the floor. Uh, the two goons look towards you, Destry, uh, uh, and they run up to you to try to help you carry the stone. You fucking idiots! We're not meant to kill them! No one's seeing our faces, right, Govna? <laughs> Alright, these other three guards are still trying to break into the Merkmeyer stone room. They got a 17. They finally kick it open. They burst into the room with that other guard who tells them the Merkmeyer stone is missing, and they start fanning out. One is going to go up to the attic, one is going to try to go to this door, one goes to the secret door, and one rushes back out into the Allosaurus exhibit. Cleaning staff stays still. The guards outside continue looking for Inchi. Inchi, you can hear them actually walk past the secret door that you're at. And then... Inchi's knocked out. 
He's uh, bleeding out, but he's not uh-huh. unconscious. Okay. Uh, Inchi, you hear the sound of high heels clicking on stairs, and you see Alda Arkin in a black dress walk down these stairs. She is also walking with this human-sized doll that uh, y'all saw earlier when Destry went into her office. And for stat purposes, it is a stare, scarecrow, but it is a human-sized doll dressed up in prehistoric clothes, and she has cast spells on it to make it her bodyguard. And you hear her coming down the stairs, and she says, fuck, 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 fuck. This was supposed to be an easy job, an easy job. Skim off the top, get back, but now everything's going to crash down. And she comes down, and she sees this scene with this goblin and the mimic, and the goblin holding... Uh, this bag of coins that is spilled out onto the floor, and she goes, Heavens above. I found the thief. I will be a hero. Get over here, goblin. And she walks over to you, and she kicks the sword out of your hands, and she says, Marigold, pick it up. I, I, big dagger. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, this scarecrow is going to walk over to you and try to pick you up. I'm going to roll a d20. And it manages to pick you up and throw it, throw you over its shoulder. And sh- Alda Arkin starts taking all these coins and everything you stole and shoving it back into the box. She hides the purple cloth and she puts a lid on it. And she starts dragging it uh, over to the secret door that you entered through over here. It's going to take her two turns to do that. Or this turn and another turn to do that. Okay. Shaz, it is your turn. All right. I'm getting in the cart, getting ready with the reins, and prepared to uh, take off once everybody hops in the party van. Sounds good to me. Inchi, your turn. Roll a death saving throw. That's a save. You got above a 10, so it's a save. You got one save, and you got one failure. So you're doing pretty good. Put me. Uh, you know, I, I'm not even sure. And she would. Yeah, just, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, you can mumble something, like if you want, if you wanted to say something. He was going to protest, but I don't think he wants to be in the same room as the mimic anymore. So he's just going to let this happen. He's fine with it. Okay. Yeah. All right. This guard is dead. I'm going to delete him. Destry, it is your turn. Uh, with all three. I three of you carrying the stone, it's easy to move. You can move freely now. But all of you have to roll a d12. Oh, hell yeah. That's exciting. Yeah! So, um, you know, about a uh, 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 fucking about that, um, I'd rather not. You don't want them to touch it? No. No, it's not that. I... <laughs> I'm just not happy that they fucking shanked him. All right, uh, D12. Eight. Look, I didn't know the emo guy getting a knife would be a bad thing. <laughs> 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 uh, he, he, he was supposed to be a danger to himself. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right. So with an eight, all three of you. Your joints stiffen. You have disadvantage on dexterity checks and dexterity saving throws. Cool. The only one that I'm not affected then would be. Uh... What the fuck is that? Sean, yeah, eat yourself, Sean. Hey, Vinny. So, there you go. Uh, yeah, Thank we're you. going. We're going to jump over to the cart. Okay. And I'm going to get the raven to still look for a uh, buddy. Hold up. Okay, so y'all are at the second floor hole. 
Who's jumping out first? Uh, I'm going to send the two goons, and then they can catch me and the stone. <laughs> okay, so the goons jump out. It's a 30-foot jump. They have to aim for a cart, and they have disadvantage on this roll. I'm going to have them roll as a unit. Lamau. Taking the lower roll of 16, they Damn. both manage to jump out and land in the cart of clothes. Okay. Uh, hold up. Going to roll for the health of the cart. Ooh, with a five, uh, they land on it and they uh, uh, crack the uh, crack. You hear like some wood crack and uh, they shoot out a bunch of them trash and blankets that uh, were on top of it, just landing on it. The force of that blows away some of the blankets, so it is less secure for you to jump on it, Destry. Oh, that's fine. Okay. And now you're planning to jump out with the stone? No. No? No, I'm gonna Misty Step with my last spell slot. <laughs> <laughs> Why the fuck, fuck would I jump out holding a 150-pound stone? You could have done that the whole time? That would have saved us so much arguing about how many carts there were. This fucking guy, why I oughta. This fucking <laughs> guy. This fucking guy. Alright, so all of you make it successfully to the ground. Blinken and Shaz, uh, you can see that Destry is holding in his hands a 100-pound, faintly glowing green stone with a giant crack down the center of it. Just being around the stone gives you a sense of unease. Hawkins? And on that note, on Muley Horse. Uh, Destry, you hear your raven say, I smell blood. I smell acid. I, I smell goblin blood, blood, boys. No. Still beating heart. That is not reassuring. Uh, you hear uh, that bird going, <laughs> and it's making oh. that noise uh, somewhere to the back of the museum. As sad as it is, I feel like the priority would be getting that stone out of here. Oof. Because, like, mean... well, if it hatches, we're all dead because we're literally beside the stone. Like my, my character would agree to that, yes. Wait, what? If the stone hatches, we're all dead? Oh yeah. Should have told you about that. Drive <laughs> <laughs> Alright, and the, on that note, my ready to action to start driving. <laughs> the the stone is actually an egg of an eldritch whore. Alright. Mm -hmm. So you guys begin driving away out of El Torchal Villa. Um, um, if we left any of the goons behind, oh well. Uh, no, yeah, the other the goons are with us. Oh. Yeah, everybody's together. I mean, you could tell them to scatter if you want. It would make life easier if, if they split now, yeah. I mean, I can zap us all with Pass Without Trace, and then we take off into the sewers, and we're good. Why not both? The second they scatter out 30 feet past, they are totally trackable again. It is much safer to travel as a group. It's enough. safer for us to travel as a group. They don't know who we are. All of our faces are covered. If they get caught, oh no! I mean, and, if we're all escaping into the same sewer tunnel, and they, they can, can all... scatter once we're, like, through the tunnels. Because oh, then they'd have to freaking track the goons through the sewers with Pass Without Trace, then try to pick up the trail from God knows where. Again, fair, I suppose. Okay. You guys begin driving, um, begin driving away from El- or you're going to the sewers? Yeah, we're, well, we're, 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 tr go we're trying to get a safe distance away. And then find a quiet spot to like ditch the cart and dip into the sewers. 
Okay. All right. So y'all ditch the cart. Uh, you notice after a while that uh, the wheel, the axle on it is kind of broken anyway, and it was going to fall apart soon. Y'all ditch it somewhere, and then you find a manhole cover, and you slip into it with everyone except the person who loves the sewers. In sheet, go ahead and roll a death saving throw. 18. 18. That's another save. If you get one more of those, you're still alive. Okay? Alda is dragging yep. this box over to the secret door. She's almost to it. Scarecrow is still holding you. Roll another death saving throw. Oh. It's an 8. Oh, fuck. 2-2. Two, two. You're 2 for 2, dude. Next one's gonna determine your fate. Hey, would Alda my raven have found him? between uh, the saves? Real quick. Alda pushes open that secret door and steps outside into the night air. Um, uh, her uh, doll follows afterwards with Inchi on its shoulder, and your crow, uh, Destry, says to you, I see him! I see Goblin! I see him! He is bleeding! Bleeding badly! Uh... With two with a human or an elf and a doll. Cool. Uh, I'm going to get my familiar to uh, give the help action. That would stabilize him? Uh, it would give him assistant, like it would uh, advantage. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, or, um, you know, hold up one second. Let me double check something. Yeah, see if, you're, if your imp can do anything to help. You could also, you know, if you were desperate, make a plea to your no. patron. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, On a know... side note, how are those two flaming cards? <laughs> uh, they're they're just burning <laughs> slowly. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, oh. the heaps have. Plus one wisdom. Medicine is wisdom. No, he's just going to do the, the help action. Okay. Uh, Sean, roll a death saving throw with advantage. Your highest roll will determine Inchi's fate. Okay. I don't know how to do advantage for death saves, so I'm just going to roll it twice. Yeah, that's, that's, right. that's exactly yeah. what you do. 19. Hey! And they both save. With yeah. Both of them, you Go. save. So, Inchi, one of the last things you see before you fall unconscious, you're still alive, but unconscious at zero hit points, is that crow, that raven, uh, flying uh, above you in circles, and then it lands on you, and then it opens its beak, and a hand reaches out and touches your cheek and you feel a little bit of warmth and power from that, and you stabilize, and you stop bleeding out. Little inchy. And I guess it's all I see and say before I uh, fall unconscious. Yep. Uh, so we are going to leave it. With you falling unconscious, you know that Alda is holding on to that box that has all those gold coins and ore. And you are on Marigold's shoulders. And everybody else, as y'all start hopping into the sewer, you hear the uh, footsteps of the city watch, and you hear the low alarm. They have like this little mechanical alarm thing. They twist a little knob, and it makes the sound as they march down the streets towards El Torchal Villa. It is about six city guards in full plate armor and their elegant water davian uh, long swords. That is the last thing y'all see in here as you dip down into the sewers. And I think that that is where we can call it for the night. There. Well. Well, that was exciting. That had some twists and turns that I did not expect. Yeah, it sure did. Almost lost a party member. First heist. 
got very fucking close. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in that case, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end my stream. I'll go ahead and raid someone, um, and I will make sure to upload this on YouTube. Um, you know, this is the Run the Jewels episode. Ha! Huh? So, episode 3. Episode Jewels. 3. Um, so I'm sure next week we'll play something uh, when we'll you know, obviously stream and record it, whatever, and post it on YouTube mm -hmm. next time. So... Uh, thanks for hosting, Mike, and uh, I'll go ahead and rate someone here in a second, and until next time, folks. Yes, sir. Man, if we run into a one-hit mimic this time, I wonder what's going on with the rest of the heist. Christ, Christ well, almighty. Well, sounds like the next heist is a prison break. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> Maybe. I have to figure this out because this is not how I expected this to end. Well, um, so I, you know how I mentioned I was thinking of retiring Destry? Let me use the bathroom real quick, man. You yeah. son of a bitch! <laughs> Stop drinking! <laughs>